two universities that came into being together 100 years ago in 1910 as sister schools go at each other today on the football field. It's the Bowling Green State University Falcons with a record of one and four against the Kent State Golden Flashes at two and three. It is homecoming at Dick Stadium in Kent. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mid-American Conference Football. I'm Jeff Phelps, my partner, former Cleveland Browns Pro Bowl cornerback Hanford Dixon. Bowling Green with a first-year head coach in Dave Clawson Hanford and four straight losses coming into this game. Some games that have driven Coach Clawson absolutely nuts because they were close games. They've been right in them, and they thought they could win them. And one of the reasons for that has been the play of their senior quarterback, Tyler Sheehan, one of the best in the Mid-American Conference. He is one of the best. A big, big uh, quarterback, 6'3", 223 pounds, ranked second in the MAC averaging over 291 yards a game. He can throw it and he can zip it and you can see he also can run the football. His favorite target of course is Barnes, 53 receptions and that's 10 more than anyone else right now, Jeff. Freddie, the former quarterback doing an outstanding job at wide receiver. So we have the experience for Bowling Green at the skill positions just the opposite story for the Kent State Golden Flashes. They will start a true freshman at quarterback today, making his second collegiate start. His name is Spencer Keith. And boy, he can throw at Hanford. As a high school senior last year in Arkansas, passed for over 5,000 yards, top total in the nation. Well, he can throw it, and he is a freshman. Great opportunity for him to play right now. And he's going to have another freshman that he likes to go to, talking about good right there with 16 receptions and that is leading this football team in receptions right now. Eugene Jarvis the outstanding running back for Kent State out for the year with a lacerated kidney. Terry has done a nice job filling in over 100 yards in each of his last two games. Bowling Green has had great success here at Kent State. Four straight wins at Dick Stadium. Overall in this series Bowling Green has won seven of the last eight games against Kent State. Flash is trying to change that today at homecoming. Bowling Green, one and four. Kent State, two and three. Kickoff coming right up from Dick Stadium. Today's game is brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. First Energy, our energy is working for you. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. And by National City, now a part of PNC, proud to be the official bank of the Mid-American Conference. Dick Stadium looking better than ever. Fabulous renovations here over the last, well, several years. They have changed things drastically in the end zone you're looking at right now. New concession stands, all kinds of goodies here at Kent State. Marathon presents the MAC football game of the week. It is Kent State, home on homecoming against the Bowling Green Falcons. Two schools, Hanford, that go way back together to the year 1910, and they have gone back and forth on the football field for a very long time. And with two quarterbacks that love to throw in offenses that love the pass, we, we, we could see plenty of action in this one. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Jeff, and I think we are going to see uh, a bunch of passing. Uh, what a perfect day for it. I mean, you're talking about just absolutely gorgeous day for football, and you got uh, Bowling Green uh, looking for their third straight win right now over Kent State, and, and uh, Kent State just got to get it going. Uh, they're at uh, two and three record-wise, but uh, I, I, I'm waiting to see, uh, especially Bowling Green, throw the football and to see if Kent State can stop the pass. Our keys to the game today, as the Golden Flash is getting ready to play the Falcons. For Bowling Green, Hanford, they have given up big plays on defense this year. They have to avoid that, and they're veterans, of course. Tyler Sheehan, Freddie Barnes, they have to come through today. Well, there's no question that they can score points, and, and, and again, Tyler can light up uh, the scoreboard, I mean, with this arm. But the problem is, just as you said, it's been their defense, whether or not their defense can... Uh, can put a halt and stop somebody and therefore they can get back on track and stop this losing streak. Freddie Cortez, freshman kicker from Florida, ready to boot this thing for Kent State. He's a left-footed kicker as the ball rolls off the tee. Back deep for Bowling Green to receive. John Pettigrew from nearby Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio on the right side and Roger Williams the all-time leader in return yardage on kickoffs for Bowling Green standing on the left. If I remember when we played, uh, I was at Southern Mississippi and we came and we played Bowling Green. We're in Bowling Green, not Kent State, but it was so cold. I couldn't <laughs> you wait. You were a Mississippi oh, guy. I Hanford. couldn't wait to get out of Ohio. <laughs> and now where do you live? And I'm happy I'm here. <laughs> Freddie Cortez 
Puts his foot into it. We are playing football at Dick Stadium. And this goes to Roger Williams at the six-yard line. Roger cuts it back at the 20. Gets across the 30 and out to the 38-yard line. So nice field position for Bowling Green as they get things started here. Danny Sadler from Maple Heights High School on the stop for Kent State. There's Tyler Sheehan. Boy, it seems like he has been the starting quarterback at Bowling Green for a very, very long time. Six foot four, 223 pounder out of Cincinnati LaSalle High School. Well, and he's making his 31st consecutive start. He has been a very good one for the Falcons. He has a receiver on each side. Chris Wright is the man in motion. Handoff goes to Willie Jeter. Junior tailback from Miami, Florida. Not a whole lot of running room there. Willie coming into this game averaging 4.5 yards a carry. Kevin Hogan on the stop for Kent State. Big size across the front for the Bowling Green Falcons. Brady Minturn started all 12 games last year at left tackle. He's at 293 pounds. Everybody uh, in excess of 290, nobody over 300. Tyler Donahue is the big guy on that line of 300 pounds. And Freddie Barnes, the man to keep an eye on, leading receiver in the country with 53 receptions, and he has the football now, taking the direct snap. Freddie's used to that, though, Hanford, former quarterback. Well, yeah, and, and what he did was he just lined up straight at the quarterback, and it took Tyler and sprinted him out to the right side and uh, to see what Freddie could do, get him back used to running the uh, football from that quarterback position. Last year was the first season that Freddie was actually a full-time wide receiver. He's done a little bit of everything. Third down six. Four receivers on the field right now for Bowling Green. Sheehan gets plenty of time from his offensive line. Rolls to his right. Throws and incomplete. Pass was intended for Justice Jones, but he was... Not able to bring that one in and stay in bounds. Aaron Hall applying the pressure to Tyler Sheehan. And that'll bring up fourth down as Kent State comes through defensively on the opening series, Hanford Dixon. Well, that was just uh, great coverage uh, by Kent State. Again, nowhere for Tyler to throw the football. I think its favorite target was Bar Barnes were covered, even though he rolled to the right with the football. Again, give Kent State defense a lot of credit for a three and out. Nick Iovanelli averaging 38.1 yards per punt from the 30-yard line. Puts it in the air, a nice one. Laneric Muldrew goes back to his 7-yard line to bring this one in for Kent State and gets it out across the 10. And Kent State, tough field position as they get going with Spencer Keith, the freshman from Arkansas, at quarterback. Jarrett Sanderson on the punt coverage for Bowling Green. There's the freshman from Arkansas. He's from Little Rock. Unbelievable numbers last year in high school. He threw it 625 times, Hanford. 5,300 yards passing, 70. That's 7-0. 7 <laughs> 70 touchdowns last year in high school. He did throw 22 interceptions. But he is here at Kent State and ready to put that ball in the air. Jamison Pons was the motion man there for Kent State. Flashes, a little razzle-dazzle to get things started. And this one's working big time. This could go all the way. Heading down the field, Kent State looking good. And into the end zone for a touchdown for Kent State. It's Sam Kirkland going all the way down the field. 87 yards on the touchdown run for Kent State. Man, I guarantee you this, when they put this play in, they just wanted to run this maybe to just get the freshman off, let him feel a little comfortable. But Sam had other things going. When he took this football, he saw the opening, and he took it to the house all the way for the touchdown. Great start for Kent State. Their defense come up with the big three and out, and then their offense on the first play, touchdown, right here at home. And that's the fair first carry, first running carry on the season for Sam Kirkland, the sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. 86 officially on the touchdown run for Kent State. Freddie Cortez in to try the extra point. 8 of 10 on extra pointers this year for Freddie. Once Sam got in the open, he didn't have a choice but to score because if he would have been caught from behind, he would have really heard it from his teammates. Cortez adds the extra point. Kent State jumps out quickly. One play on offense, one touchdown, an 86-yarder. 7-0, Kent State on top of Bowling Green. Falcons get the football back when we return to Dick Stadium.
Sam Kirkland came to Kent State as a defensive back. But when you can run the football like that, Hanford, you want to be on the offensive side of the ball. <laughs> you know, it's just funny watching him. He's over there telling everybody about that hole I had and how I just hit it up in there. <laughs> oh, it was great. It was right there. It was perfect. <laughs> Penalty against Kent State has moved the ball back to the 15-yard line for Freddie Cortez to kick it off, so Bowling Green should end up with terrific field position. Cortez puts it in the air. Roger Williams from the 25-yard line for Bowling Green. Great coverage by the Kent State special teams. And you could tell this Kent State football team is really ready to go. Bowling Green right now offensively have to come out and establish something. Uh, they have to do something, pick up a couple of first downs and get their team going. Tyler Sheehan, certainly the man who can do that. Last year against Kent State, had a career high 109 yards rushing. He has given the Golden Flashes fits over his years at Bowling Green. His big tight end, Jimmy Scheidler, goes in motion to the right side. Sheehan looking left the entire way. That's Freddie Barnes and Hanford. We will see a bunch of those this year. Freddie coming into this game, we mentioned, with the 53 receptions. But he's averaging 8.4 yards a catch. It's almost like the running game through the air for Bowling Green. Well, yeah, and that's the problem. I mean, you see him right here, just a quick out and uh, good hands by uh, Freddie. But it's 17 receptions in one game of first Marshall alone, but not that many yards. Bowling Green with some injuries at the receiver spot, so they're a little thin there right now. That one swung out to Adrian Hodges, and he turns it into a nice game for the Falcons. Ray Hudson, their sophomore from Detroit, came up with a knee injury against Ohio. He is not playing today. And Tyrone Pronti, their senior from Maple Heights, Ohio, out for the season with a broken foot. Well, you got Tyler. He's just throwing some high percentage passes right here. Just a screen right there to the flanker. Uh, catches the ball and pick up a first down. It was kind of a crummy morning in Northeast Ohio. Overcast, a little rainy, but a beautiful afternoon right now here at Dick Stadium. Sun shining on the artificial curved surface here at Dick Stadium. Jeter trying to bounce his way free, surrounded by blue and gold. Dan Hartman coming up from his safety spot on the stop. Across the front for Kent State, Kevin Hogan, Quentin Rainey, Aaron Hull, Zach Williams, some very quick defensive linemen for Kent State. Rainey leading the team with six tackles for loss. The linebackers keep an eye on Mixon. He's in the middle, and his high school teammate from Cincinnati Coleraine, Brian Lanehart. Leading the back with four interceptions. It's second down and eight. Sheehan in the shotgun, two receivers to the right side. He throws and completes it. Nick Rieke, backup tight end, brings it in for Bowling Green, and that's a first down Falcons. Well, what you're seeing them start uh, coming out early also in this ball game, they're using two tight ends, running two tight end sets. And again, he's uh, not trying to hit anything far down the field. He's just running these little quick outs. And he's been successful because he's moving the chains going down the field. B.J. Walters on the stop for Kent State. Falcons ran a spread offense under Greg Brandon. Dave Clawson prefers the West Coast style of offense, and he hopes to gradually change things, but he inherited a team, Hanford, that had spread offense personnel as Willie Peter picks up a couple going right side, Lee Stalker, Brian Lanehart on the stop for Kent State. Well, and that's what that spread is designed to do. It's a lot of dink and dunk, and then occasionally what they'll do is they'll try to catch you sleeping and hit you for the big one uh, uh, down the field. Four receivers on the field. Keep an eye on these players today. Freddie Brown, on defense, Bassler, Sanderson. The impact players in this game, the Bowling Green. I mean, what you have to do is, against a team like Bowling Green, uh, they're never uh, going to the huddle. You've got the coaches, they're calling the plays straight from the sideline. You've got the players there, they're not in the huddle up, they just stand right there at their position, and then the quarterback will come up to the line of scrimmage. Uh, Tyler, he will call the play. And Kent State has got to be ready to go. Third down and four. Hodges in motion, two receivers now each side. Under a rush, Sam Frist was right there, but he completes the pass. 
Aaron Hodges brings it in along the sideline, and that's another first down for Bowling Green. Here's a look at our impact players brought to us by National City, now a part of PNC, proud to be the official bank of the Mid-American Conference for Kent State. It has to be Spencer Keith, the freshman quarterback, and then the Cincinnati Colerain High School teammates, Cabrani Mixon, transfer from Michigan, and Brian Lanehart with those four interceptions. He had six interceptions last year to lead the Mac and was seventh in the nation, so keep an eye on Brian. He has a real eye for that football out there from his safety spot. From the 19-yard line, Nolan Green put together a nice drive. Freddie Barnes out of the shotgun. Keeps it himself. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage where Quinton Rainey brings him down. Well, it's very important for Bowling Green now that they have this nice drive going to not stall. They have to try to put, uh, well, they're looking at possibly three, but I know they would like to uh, answer uh, Kent State with seven points to tie this game up. Gene with a couple of tight ends to the left side, receiver to each side. Jeter in the backfield. Quickly throws it out to Freddie Barnes. Maybe just a little behind Freddie Hanford. He's not able to hang on as B.J. Walters on the coverage. Yeah, but that ball was a little bit behind Freddie, but that's a ball that he should catch, and he's got to catch because that ball hit him right in the hands. He's, 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 he's indicating there that it was behind him, but as you're going to see, as, as you're going to see, this ball hit him right in the hand. So that's a ball that he should catch. On third and 11, Falcons go to four wide receivers. Justice Jones in the game. He's to the left side. Sheehan looks right, now looks back left, and he's brought down. Williams gets into the backfield and makes the stop for Kent State. Zach Williams in there in a hurry, the junior defensive lineman from Erie, Pennsylvania. Well, that was a big, big sack. You can see she and he pumps the ball once and uh, had a guy open, just didn't see him on his right side. But Williams come right there and picked up a big, big sack for Kent State, and that's going to force uh, that's going to force Sheehan right now with fourth down, possibly look like they're going to go for it. On fourth and 21, Hanford, they're going to go for it. I wouldn't put anything past Tyler Sheehan. Flag on the play as the Falcons taking too much time. So it pushes it back five, Hanford. Well, I think what they're trying to do is, is get their well, punter in position so uh, he can have a little more room in order to lay that ball inside the 10-yard line. But I just, you know, I just didn't understand that in the beginning because I was saying fourth down, <laughs> just impossible. Especially with a fourth and 21, now fourth and 26. There's Nick Iaconelli standing right on the 49-yard line. Moldrow back deep for Kent State. He is standing on the 11. I have Anelli. Little punch kick right down the field. And oh, how about that one? The extra five yards paid off big time as Roger Williams downfield downs it on the one yard line. Well, that was just perfect execution by Bowling Green. Again, exactly what they wanted to do. He took the football and he ran a little bit, but excellent punt. Good coverage downfield by Roger Williams. Kent State's second offensive play of the game. On the way, they're up 7-0. In our keys to the game, we said Bowling Green had to avoid the big plays. Had to stop the big plays. Well, Kent State has run one play on offense. It went 86 yards for a touchdown. But now backed up to the one-yard line. Spencer Keith, the quarterback, keeps it. Plows ahead. It's maybe two. Well, it's very important for Bowling Green's defense right now. Since you have them backed up, let's try to do something. Let's stop them right here. Let's give everything we have to stop them from keep them from getting the first down, and then we can get good field position back for the offense. Kent State starting a true freshman, not only at quarterback, but also at right tackle. Brian Winters at six foot five, three hundred twenty pounds, starting for Doug Martin. He's from Hudson, Ohio. Played for the United States in the Junior World Championships in Canton. Second down and eight. Jacquees Terry trying to find a little running room up the middle. It's not there. James Schneider 
fills up that hole very quickly for Bowling Green and bring up third down and long. Well, again, just nowhere to go. James Snyder just right in there in the hole, put that helmet right in the chest, and uh, Bowling Green right now are doing exactly what they need to do. Now it's third down. Let's see if they can hold and turn this ball back over to their offense. They're running a trick play from the 14, that's not bad, Hanford. You don't want to do that when you're on the one. Keith throws out of the end zone and overshoots his intended receiver. That was Tyshawn Good, leading receiver for Kent State with 16 catches. Keith Morgan well, on the coverage for Bowling Green. You're going to see the young man, Keith, almost made a crucial mistake just then. He held that ball almost too long in the end zone. You have to get rid of that football. Watch him. He have to feel this heat coming from his backside, and he almost gave up a safety on that play. Matt Leinhardt with about a foot to spare behind him. Back to punt for Kent State. Willie Jeter standing at midfield for Bowling Green. Reinhardt averaging 39 yards a kick. Low and wobbly on this one. And it'll end up right about at midfield for the Bowling Green Falcons with five minutes, 55 seconds to play here in the first quarter. That actually was a win for Bowling Green's defense. Sure was, I mean, they yeah. did exactly what they had to do. Now you're looking at their offense. They got the football probably just about midfield, probably on the 48-yard line, their own 48. Now let's see if Tyler Sheehan and company can come out here and, and put some points on the board. Tyler puts it up, no question about that. He threw 44 passes against Troy, 46 at Missouri, 62 at Marshall for 383 yards. Last week against Ohio, he went 28 of 52, 390 yards, a personal record for Sheehan with two touchdowns. He has two receivers each side. Tyler, the shovel pass forward. Adrian Hodges gets maybe a couple of yards. Well, it looked like Hodges had a little opening to the outside on that play once he got the football because inside there, everything was blocked off. The hole was clogged. That was just nothing there. You're going to see him. He's going to come down. He's going to take this pitch. And you can see if he tries to cut this maybe to the outside, he can pick up some yardage. But that's easy for me to say up here in the booth. <laughs> two receivers, two tight ends on the field now for Bowling Green is Jeter. Splits out wide to the left. Sheehan across the middle intended for Barnes. It's incomplete. Cabrani Mixon on the coverage for Kent State. He wears number 11 on defense. Spencer Keith wearing number 11 on offense for Kent State. Well, one thing you can say about this Kent State defense, they know exactly where Barnes are on the field each and every play. They had absolutely, it was three guys surrounding him then when he went for the football, and Barnes pretty much short on that one, and I don't blame him. Third down and five. Sheehan again, two receivers to each side. Peter picks up the block, and the pass is incomplete. That was intended for Chris Wright. Well, but pretty good coverage there by Kent State. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and this offense just have not been able to get into sync yet. I mean, again, you're talking about an offense that's throwing every play, and you can see that ball was tipped right there at the line of scrimmage. And the receiver maybe was open, but you could see it right there. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Now wasted field position. I have Vanelli with his third punt already here in this game. Muldrew standing back on his 10-yard line for Kent State. Big punt. Big bounce. Good break for Kent State. 7 nothing flashes on top. Five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Jeff Phelps along with Hanford Dixon as Doug Martin's team trying to win a homecoming game against Bowling Green and a four-game losing streak to the Falcons right here at Dick Stadium. Seven-nothing our score. First quarter action here at Dick Stadium and freshman Spencer Keith brings Kent State out to the 20-yard line. Freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. Making his second college start. Also started against Iowa State. Quickly throws it out to Tyshawn Hood. And he picks up seven, maybe eight yards. Again, neither one, either one of these quarterbacks today are, are, are 
trying to stretch the defense. Uh, it's still early in this ball game, but uh, uh, all we've uh, seen so far is just a little short passes. I don't think we've seen anything over uh, uh, attempt over uh, 15, 20 yards today. I'll bet we will. Let's hope so. Wait, we haven't yet, though. Two receivers left for Spencer Keith. He looks that way and loses the football. It's still loose on the ground, and Bowling Green has recovered at the 22-yard line. What a Jamal Brown from Cleveland Benedictine High School falls on it for the Falcons, and a huge break for Bowling Green. Well, what a crucial mistake right here. You, you got his own man. Uh, that's Jaquees just run right into the football, and the football comes right out of the hand of Spencer Keith. And Bowling Green, just as you said, partner, come up with a huge turnover deep in the Kent State territory. But let's see if Bowling Green can capitalize on this turnover. They're on the 22-yard line. Gene has always had a history of going big play after a turnover. He's been fun to watch in that situation. Freddie Barnes gets that one knocked down by Aaron Hall. Again, just another little short pass, but uh, it turned out pretty good because they picked up probably about seven yards on the play. Now you're looking at second and about three. But Jeff, it's always been really, really hard for an offensive team when you throw the ball as much as Kent State throws it. I, I, I've been a firm believer but that you have to establish some type of running game. Willie Jeter, the lone back in the eye right now. Excuse me, the only back in the backfield, and the pass incomplete. It was a forward pass intended for Chris Wright. Danny Sadler there on the coverage for Kent State. Look, look a little out of sync, don't they? They, they do, and, and and I just can't put my uh, my hands on it, but they are out of sync with this offense, and uh, and you could just tell it. I mean, the guys are just going through the motion uh, a, a little bit, but uh, still an opportunity here to pick up a first down and maybe put some points on the board for this Golden Green team. It's third down and three. Barnes, the receiver, wide to the right, and pass goes his way. Freddie. Out of bounds, incomplete. He was juggling that football, and it brings up fourth down and three. B.J. Walters right there for Kent State. Well, if, you, if, if you're if Bowling Green's defense, I mean, you got to be looking really, really funny at this offense. Let's see if he comes up with this. Uh, can't really tell from that angle. Foot's down. Didn't have possession. And, and the official said he just did yeah. not have possession of that football. And Mac East, special teams player of the week on the field to try this field goal for Bowling Green. Jerry Phillips, redshirt freshman from Green Springs, Ohio. It's a 33-yarder, and it's blocked by Kent State. Flash is lateraling the football, trying to make something happen on this return, and they do! <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Matt Reinhardt heading down the field. Excuse me, it's not Reinhardt for Kent State. Heading all the way down the field for Kent State is Quinton Rainey. Quinton Rainey picks it up and heads down the field. He's the nose tackle. He's also the fullback on goal line situations. And another big play for Kent State. Well, Jeff Rainey, that's the second big play he's had in this ball game. Not just a touchdown, and he just ran. But you remember a couple downs later when we talked about on third down when the ball got tipped. Talking about Tyler, Rainey was the one that got his paw in there and came up with the tip ball. But a huge play right here for Rainey. I never thought he was going to make it to the end zone. How about the lateral on that, huh? Look at him. He's got his head back and those arms pumping. <laughs> and not bad for a big guy. 5'11", 235 pounds of <laughs> Look at, speed. Just heading just down the field. Manford. in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Two big plays in the first quarter for Kent State. And the flash is a chance to go up 14 to nothing. Well, that's just a prime example of Bowling Green's offense just letting this team hang around, hang around, not doing anything with the opportunities that you've been given. And as a result, you got Kent State come up with another big play. Now this ball game possibly is going to be 14-0. Will Johnson, the man who lateraled that football, looked like Anthony Mirando. Might have been the man inside getting the block. 
So Miranda with the block. And then you have Johnson with the lateral. And you have Rainey in need of the oxygen. <laughs> and it is a touchdown. Play is upheld as they were taking a look at it, making sure that the lateral uh, was in proper order, Hanford, and it was. Well, Kent State's defense have really come up huge so far in this ball game. They have, they have really answered the call. Freddie Cortez from Fort Meade, Florida. Adds the extra point, and big play combined with another big play ends up to a 14 to nothing lead for Kent State on homecoming day. I just can't get over Rainey. Uh, I mean, just that, that was classic watching him go into the end zone. 82 yards for Quinton Rainey. So we have an 82 yard and an 86 yard touchdown for Kent State in this game, Andrew. Well, you have to be when you look at the uh, when you look at the other side, Jeff. Uh, I mean, you've got to be upset with your football team because they just have not been in sync at all today. This football team. I mean, Bowling Green, have just it's just been big play after big play. Talking about as far as Kent State. All right, let's take a look at some of these big plays. Uh, Jeff, here's the reverse right here to start off the ball game. First and, offensive play of the game. Oh, and it is just a big one for a touchdown. Look at my man. He's just got his hands on his hip. And here's the second one, the one we just saw, the block. Look at it. Now you got Rainey, who is just going to run it the distance, take it in for the second score. And as a result, Kent State is leading this ball game 14 to zip. He had a pack of escorts with him on that one, didn't he, Hanford? <laughs> yes, he did. Cortez pops it up to the 30 yard line. And that's where Bowling Green gets it started. Now, if you're the Falcons, Calvin Marshall calling the fair catch on the kickoff there. If you're the Falcons, Hanford. What do you do? You've been stunned now with two big plays. And, and obviously, you don't count on big plays. It's been a fairly even game all the way around, you would think. But it's 14 0 on the scoreboard. Well, and, and, and the blame goes around this whole football team talking about Bowling Green. I mean, defensively, they've given up a big play. The first play, that was the big reverse with Curlin. Special Kirkland. teams. Yeah, Curlin just took it. And then uh, special teams give up a big play. And offensively, they're just not in sync. Sheehan has two receivers to the left, one to the right. He looks right, he throws right, and there's Freddie Barnes, and he gets the first down for the Falcons. And you would think that uh, being down 14 to nothing, I mean, you got those guys or someone on that offensive team would say, hey guys, hey, we got to get it going here. We know we can put points on the board. I mean, let's do something. But they've always found a reason to start. Three receivers left. The Bowling Green, they all turn and look at the sideline in unison. Billy Jeter cuts it back. And big hit for Kent State. Brings him down at the 46-yard line. Dan Hartman, the man at the bottom of that pile, the junior from Levittsburg. Well, Dan Hartman just came up talking about the strong safety. Just put a big, big hit on Willie Jeter. Willie Jeter already, as we know, is not a very big back. 5'7", 175 pounds junior. But watch this hit right here. Coming right. You're talking about a perfect tackle. There you are. Your head is up. Bring your arms and watch the back go backwards. Hartman's dad, Leon, played here at Kent State 1987-89. Second down and six now for Bowling Green as Hodges goes in motion. They faked a little pass to Hodges. Sheehan in trouble, throws right side and completes it. Nicely done by Tyler Sheehan because he had Cabrani Mixon right in his face well, as Justice Jones brings it in. And Jeff, that was a good looking play because they came back with that uh, that, that same little option play, but what happened, Tyler is gonna keep the football and then he's gonna look down the field and catch Barnes who made the corner right there, think that he was running the goal pattern and he broke it off at the end. Danny Sadler on the coverage there for Kent State. First down Bowling Green at the 40. Scheidler in motion, sets up the block for Willie Jeter. And Willie gets it to the 36-yard line. That's a gain of four to bring up second down at six. 
Ishmaeli Kitchen, the sophomore from Youngstown Cardinal Mooney High School on the stop for Kent State. Well, I would like to see him run the football a little bit more to really Jeter because he's what I call like a little scat bat. I mean, he's so small, again, only at 5'7", and he's a very quick guy. He's the guy that can get up in that line of scrimmage and maybe hit one for a big one. Willie last week against Ohio, 19 carries, 70 yards as Freddie Barnes brings it in. A tough game last week against Ohio for Bowling Green. There were plenty of points in that game, and they ended up losing it 44-37, to Hanford, against a good Ohio team, and that game was at Bowling Green. But they have had some tough losses. The first game, they came out with a win against a good Troy team, 31-14. Expectations raised a little bit, then went to Missouri, played Missouri at Missouri, and lost 27-20. to Good game. Went to Marshall, lost by a touchdown, 17-10. to Then went to Boise State, and they were blown out 49-14. to Hoping for better things than a loss to Ohio last week, but it was the fourth straight, so a little frustration maybe right now for the Falcons as Jeter gets inside the 30, but not by much on third down and one. He'll be very close to a first down. Aaron Hall, Will Johnson on the stop for Kent State. Yeah, and if they don't get this, that's a questionable, very, very questionable play calling as far as uh, uh, on third and short. I mean, to give that ball back to Willie that deep in the backfield when he's not that big anyway, I mean, that's more like a quarterback sneak or something uh, to try to pick up this first down. Looks just a little short, doesn't it, Hanford? And I would think that they're probably, if they are short, they are going to maybe go for this because they need to do something. They, I think they are short. Not by much. That's one of those plays where you trust your center. Ben Boychich at 6'5", 294, and you let Tyler Sheehan put his head down and pick up a foot, huh? I mean, yeah, because you got Sheehan, who's almost 230 pounds, a big guy, 6'3". I mean, he, he's good for a half a yard of nose of a football. You would think. Five seconds to play in the first quarter as we tick it down on the clock. When we come back, it's a fourth down and one for the Bowling Green State University Falcons. They need to do something. Or at the very least, quit giving up the big plays. It's 14 to nothing. The Kent State Golden Flash is on top because of two big, two big fun plays here at Dick Stadium. A very interesting first quarter here at Dick Stadium. It's 14 to nothing. Kent State on top of Bowling Green. Welcome back to the Mac Game of the Week presented by Marathon. Jeff Phelps along with Hanford Dixon. Uh, to show you, Hanford, as if you didn't already know, how time of possession can be a misleading statistic, let's check out our marathon fast stats. Time of possession in the first quarter. Over 12 minutes for Bowling Green, not even three minutes for Kent State. <laughs> and then look at the score. I mean, just there you what go. you're saying, look at the score. You would think with that kind of time possession, Bowling Green would at least have some points, but they have zero zip. Well, you could say that Kent State's defense hasn't been able to get Bowling Green's offense off the field, but they haven't really needed to, Hanford, as it's turned out in the first quarter anyway. Well, I, I think what's happening when you look at uh, Kent State's defense, uh, they have the uh, right philosophy coming into this ball game. Obviously, they got, uh, you know, they understand you could bend, you could bend, you could bend, but not break. And that's what they're doing. I mean, you look at the plays. You got Bowling Green 25, and Kent State mm -hmm. only got six plays. It's a fourth down and one. Falcons are going for it. Sheehan goes right behind his big center, Ben Boychich. So Bronny Mixon is there for Kent State. And from the looks of this spot, yes, it is a first down for Bowling Green. Well, again, just what you and I talked about. I mean, that's what they needed to do, get that big quarterback, Tyler, and just let him put his head down and follow that big offensive line and pick up the first down. You can see it. He clearly has the spot right there. When your guards and center average six foot five, 294 pounds, Hanford. You have to show the trust, don't you? Yes, you do. And now they're back again in that spread offense. From the 29, four receivers on the field, three to the right side for Tyler Sheen. He's looking right, throws that way. And Adrian Hodges 
brings it in. Cabrani Mixon on the tackle for Kent State. And, and, and again, we talked about that bend but don't break defense for Kent State. And all they are running is what we used to call an old cover seven. And what a cover seven is, you got the two safeties. You'll see them at the snap. They will both cover the halves. And then the corners will funnel everything to the inside. And then everybody will let them catch the football and come up and make the tackle. It's a gain of five, second down and five. Sheehan quickly out to Barnes. Back to Willie Jeter. And absolutely nowhere to run is Kent State. Does a nice job defending that one. Cabrani Mixon, Zach Williams on the tackle for Kent State. Well, I think the problem with that particular play is uh, Bowling Green just pretty much outsmarted themselves because they ran this play to the short side of the field. There was no room. And man. there was just yeah. absolutely for Jeter, no room, nowhere for him to go. And they end up losing yards on this play. Lost three yards, and it makes it third down and eight. Sheehan, two receivers to each side. Dave Clawson looking for his team to make a big play in this one. How about that? Completes it to Justice Jones. First down, Bowling Green at the 11-yard line. Well, and that was a good throw. I mean, that's what we've been looking for from Tyler Sheehan all day. I mean, you're going to see the big fella right here. He takes the snap and watch him plant his feet and, and moves into this throw. And it's just a perfect strike for a first down. 16 yards on the completion. Trying to plow his way up the middle. I believe that's Chris Bullock, the fullback. Mixon. Again, just nowhere for him to go up that middle. You have to give Kent State front four a lot of, lot of credit. Those guys are not giving up anything up the middle. Again, then they got that philosophy. They will bend a little bit, but they're not going to break. Now, let's see right now in this chess match if Bowling Green can get in the end zone and make a game out of this game today. It was Chris Bullock, the senior, on the carry for Bowling Green. Picked up nothing. Second down and ten. Sheehan looking right. Throws into the end zone. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Adrian Hodges brings it in in the end zone, and the Falcons get on the board. Josh Pleasant on the coverage for Kent State. But Hodges comes up with a touchdown for the Falcons. Well, Hodges beat Pleasant. I mean, just a corner route. I mean, good route and a good throw. You're going to see him. He's going to dip into the inside, and then he's going to come back out. Look how wide open he is. But if you want to see the mistake that Pleasant made right there, when you're not close enough to touch that receiver, you cannot be looking back at the quarterback because you're not going to get there in time to make a play on the ball. Good throw, good catch. Bowling Green finally on the scoreboard. Jerry Phillips adds the extra point, and the Falcons get a touchdown. Fourteen seven. Kent State on top. They'll have the football when we come back to the stadium. Adrian Hodges with his second touchdown reception of the season, and that calms things down for Bowling Green. Hanford fourteen to seven. After a couple of big plays by Kent State. Bowling Green executes the offense, puts up seven. Well, they did. I mean, 12 plays, uh, they had to come up with some points on that 12-play, 70-yard drive, and an excellent, excellent catch by Hodge. Jerry Phillips booms it deep. Anthony Bowman on the return for Kent State. Spins at the 20, gets across the 25, out to the 27-yard line. So Kent State comes out. Trying to follow up a nice offensive drive by Bowling Green, Hanford. Well, let's take a look at this touchdown pass again. Again, you're going to see Tyler. He, he sees his man. Uh, Hodges is running a corner route, and the corner is turned all the way around. And look at him. Just perfect throw, perfect catch to come within seven in this ball game. One thing that the big plays have kind of covered up for Kent State, they have just one first down in this game. On first down, good run by Jaquise Terry. Getting his second start of the season. And he has played pretty good football as Keith Morgan and Cody Basler bring him down. 212 yards on the season, averaging 7.9 yards a carry, Hanford. A, a good 61-yard run had a lot to do with that. Well, but he's done a nice job for Kent State. 109 yards and a touchdown last week on 12 carries against Baylor. 
This is Terry again. Bounces outside. Flag coming in on this play. And he's brought down James Snyder Jack on the tackle Terry along with Keith Morgan. Flag on the play. What a flag on this play. Yeah, that one unfortunately is going to come back. Uh, that penalty again is against Kent State, but if you're on Kent State bench, you have to be a little bit worried right now. What I mean by that is, again, you're talking about you're leading Personal in this game. Foul. Illegally blocking back toward the ball. Number 11, offense. 15-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Correction, number 12. I was going to say, the quarterback throwing a block like that, Hanford, come on. It was Sam Kirkland. <laughs> Back to my point, you're leading in this game 14-7, but Jeff, let's look at Here's the block on this one, but Hanford, they haven't really done much at all on offense. Well, you're right, because you look at both the, how the 14 points have come. I mean, they got lucky. Well, you want to say they got lucky. And anytime the, you get a play like that, there's an element of luck. Yes. No question. Yes, and in the way they've scored, so they haven't had the long drive yet, so hopefully they can put something together right here. Keith tries to step up. He does. Throws, completes it. A nice job by the freshman in the pocket showing a little composure well the young man did just then because he was under a lot of pressure in the pocket and he recognized that and you can see it he's he stepped up and gave himself a little time and some room so he can see so he can find his receiver big big play i like this play by keith i mean he showed some poise just then in the pocket phil garner making the catch brought down by jared sanderson third down and six for kent state Lash is trying to pick up just their second first down of this game. He throws, and that's going to be very close as Sam Kirkland. Well, he's short. The man who scored the touchdown brings it in. Well, if you look at the spot, well, uh, they're going to give it to him. Uh, that, was a, that was a good spot. But you're going to see Keith right here. He, you know, he's given this guy time to come over. In the beginning, the, the receiver was not open, and then finally he popped him. Jeff, that is short. Yep. By, they, about, by about a half a yard. They're going to have to punt this. And Reinhardt comes in to punt it away, standing on the 22-yard line. Willie Jeter back deep for Bowling Green. Big punt by Reinhardt. Jeter backpedaling. The ball bounces on the seven. Does it stay in? Ball carried into the end zone. Oh, that was close. Nate Reinhardt. Or Matt Reinhardt hung that one up, and it bounced and bounced and almost, almost down to the one-yard line. Well, if you're Kent State, the thing about it, I, I want to say if they wouldn't have touched that ball, I think it was going to stop on the one-yard line. It looked like it did. But you, you know, you can't take that chance. Those guys are doing everything they can to run down there and stop it on the one. But I think that one was going to stop anyway. Now Kent State's defense was a little bit of a challenge, Hanford. They need to slow down this Bowling Green offense that has just moved the ball down the field. They've had 31 plays already in this game. Well, they do, and and, and eventually what's going to happen is they, and see, there he is. Freddie Barnes deep. what I was talking about. Tyler Sheehan put it on the money. Freddie Barnes brings it in. B.J. Walters makes the tackle, but there's the big play for Bowling Green. Well, there is the big play, and again, what happened was Bowling Green brought Kent State out of that two deep coverage, and now they have those corners all along, and boy, Tyler took advantage of it, going to his favorite target, number seven, Barnes, for the big, big play, just a little post pattern right across the middle. Bowling Green quickly lines up, Kent State making some late substitutions defensively. Big rush by Kent State, sets up the screen pass beautifully for Lily Peter. 53 yards on that completion from Tyler Sheehan to Freddie Barnes. Cabrani Mixon making the tackle on that play for Kent State. Well, you know, I think what happened, Freddie Barnes heard you talk about his reception and saying that he, you know, he was catching a lot of them, but not for a lot of yardage. Han Hanford, if you're a, if you're a receiver, <laughs> It's it's disrespectful to you to the to the game to have a receiving yes. average under 10. Isn't yes, it? it is. Come on. Yes, it is. Yeah, that'll boost Freddie a little bit. Really Jeter trying to find some running room. Kent State strings it out nicely. A bunch of the flashes there. Dan Hartman finally bringing him down with 
Nicely read on that one by Kent State. Boy, you're going to see those flashes right here. They really pursue to the football. There is just absolutely nowhere for Jeter to go after he takes his football, and that's what you want to do. You want to string that thing out to your help come, and that was pursuit coming from inside out to the football. Third down and 12 now for Bowling Green. They are two of seven on third downs today. They go with four wide receivers. Sheehan in the shotgun. Rose, a little short on the pass out to Adrian Hodges. Dan Hartman on the coverage for Kent State. And he will be well short of the first down. Well, Hartman, who's been pretty much all over the field today for this football team, I think he's right now, that's his fifth tackle if they, if they call that a completion. No chance to pick up any yardage on that one. Ball was thrown low and Hodges had to go down to get it as Hartman makes the stop. Well, again, you got fourth down, and I do not believe that Bowling Green is going to run a play here. That's oh, that was wrong. And they are. Sheehan on fourth and 12. Completes it. Freddie Barnes gets the first down, gets loose, and gets inside the 10 yard line. Well, you got, she you got Sheehan and Freddie Barnes are starting to hook up right now. These two guys, they know each other well, and they are starting to make plays. You're going to see Barnes again on the outside left. He's just coming straight down, running a deep out pattern, just enough for the first down to pick up the first down and a missed tackle. Bowling Green lines up quickly. Sheehan slings it out to Freddie Barnes. And those passes are dangerous, Hanford. They, they're, they're scary because if a defensive back has a read on that thing, well, look out. Yeah, and, and then again, you have a lot of people that are say, look at Bowling Green deep. I mean, Kent State's defense, they're tired right now. But you got to look at it the other way. You got Bowling Green, they're really not making any substitutions. The same guys are on the field. So you just have to go. Defensively, Kent State's got to make a play to get off the field. Jeter and Chris Bullock both in the backfield now for Bowling Green. Second down and eight. Barnes, touchdown. Freddie Barnes gets into the end zone. Third touchdown reception on the season for Freddie. And just like that, Bowling Green puts together a couple of drives. Hanford, big play, a 53-yarder to Freddie Barnes. He gets the touchdown. And we're one point away from a tie football game. Well, you're talking about Sheehan again, his favorite target. Look at him in the beginning. Look off this defense. And Barnes is showing you he's got excellent hands. And he is playing a lot bigger than his six-foot frame. I mean, he looked like he was about 6'3 going across there for the touchdown. Matt Norsick in to try the extra point for Bowling Green. He nails it. Uh, big plays are nice. Maybe long, sustained, effective drives are even better. And that's what Bowling Green has put together on the last couple of possessions. They've tied the game at 14. Nice recovery from the Kent State big plays. We have a good one going at Dick Stadium. Freddie Barnes comes up with the second receiving touchdown of this game for Bowling Green. Big drive, Hanford, big play in at a 53-yarder going to Barnes. Well, Freddie Barnes is having right now a monster game. You can see him right now. Those two guys really know each other. There's the big out for the uh, third down play, and here he is right there for the 11-yard touchdown strike. Monster game so far, and Sheehan, I mean, just absolutely on target. Jerry Phillips has it on the tee, booms it deep for Bowling Green. Anthony Bowman in the end zone says, uh, no, let's take it at the 20-yard line. Hanford, now Kent State, and we talked about it last possession, but it's becoming a little more critical. Now the Bowling Green has put it in the end zone again. They have to get something going offensively. Just one first down for Kent State in this game as opposed to 10 for Bowling Green. Well, they really do. I mean, you, you look at it, the Bowling Green right now, almost 200 yards to the wall fence. It's Kent State 122. And again, Tyler Sheehan, those, I mean, he's got, he's heating it up right now. He's just uh, starting to just throw the football, and he's on target with every throw. Spencer Keith completes that one. Gets it out to Kendrick Presley, Jamal Brown. 
on the tackle there for Bowling Green. We, we saw the total yardage figure, Hanford, at 122 for Kent State, but 86 of that came on the first play. So take away that first play, and you're looking at 36 yards in total offense for Kent State. Well, yeah, those numbers are definitely uh, misleading uh, on the Kent State side. And uh, very important right now because that defense is tired a little bit. Offense needs to pick up some first down and move this uh, football and give that defense a little break. Keith, fake the handoff, lost it deep. Put plenty of air under that one. Downfield, a little contact between Jamal Brown and Tyshawn Good. And no flag on the play, despite the pleas coming out of the Kent State grandstands. Well, and I pretty much agree with the call. I, I think it was a no-call well, play. You, because of course you he, do, well, Mr. Pro Bowl he, cornerback. He, he wasn't going to catch this football yeah. anyway. He was pretty much double covered. But I think where, obviously, I think where he should have gone with the football was to the other side. He had Presley, number 15, was open over here on a deep out. Second down and 10. Terry. Plows ahead for a few yards when Eugene Jarvis went out with the lacerated kidney. And, of course, Eugene, one of the outstanding running backs in Kent State, well, in Mid-American Conference history. And, and he, he went out for the season. Terry has stepped in and, and done pretty well, Hanford. A couple of 100-yard games back-to-back. -back. He had 103 against Miami in the win. And then 109 last week on 12 carries against Baylor. Yeah, and I want to get back on the on the young fellow talking about Spencer Keith, the quarterback. And reads like that will come from him. Let's not forget, he is still young. I mean, he is still a Second freshman. start. Yes, his second start. So he will, he will learn those reads. Keith steps up. He's done a nice job with that. Touch this one. Phil Garner throws a block. Spencer Keith has some running room. Knock out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And a flag comes in late. They're going to call that a late hit on Bowling Green. Phil Garner, a terrific block for Kent State. Really sealed that side for him, Hanford. He did. This, this, this was a big play. This is exactly what they needed in order to get the ball past After midfield. The out of bounds, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit, defense. 15 yards, first down. Well, let's take a look at this again. You're going to see Spencer Keith. Nothing's there. So he said, what am I going to do? I'm going to take this football down, tuck it, and I am going to run with it. Picked up a great block. I don't oh, know man. about that. Uh, about that. I, I see why they're upset on Bowling Green's sideline. A little line. high. What a yeah, little high. not. Uh, I don't know about I, That's a questionable call. Called against Keith Morgan, the sophomore from Bellefontaine, Ohio. You have to let him play. It's a first and 10 for Kent State, 28-yard line. Keith has the Kent State oh. offense moving. He's hit as he's thrown, and it's incomplete. Jarrett Sanderson was right there in his face and gave Spencer a little welcome to the Mid-American Conference. Oh, what you got to see is Sanders coming from the backside on a bliss, and he, Spencer Keith does not see him, and he is lucky that he got this football away. If he would have had time, he had his big tight end open, but I'm just glad he didn't get hurt on that play. Spencer Keith, a young man who wants to be a doctor, was planning to go to Ivy League schools, study medicine, play a little football, but then he had that huge senior season in high school where he threw 70 touchdowns and led the nation in passing yards with over 5,000. And he decided, you know, I want to play a little Division I ball as, as Terry picks up a few on second down and 10. So he looked around Hanford. He didn't sign on signing day. He, he kind of got a late start in that. Other schools were thinking he's going to the Ivy League. Instead, he went to Vanderbilt, took a look at Vanderbilt. They offered him a chance to come on as a preferred walk-on and join the program. And Doug Martin said, come here, give you a scholarship. He took a visit to Kent State and decided, all right, I want to play Division I football and study pre-med. And that's exactly what he's doing here at Kent State. <laughs> Live right wide receivers in this formation as Keith lobs it into the end zone or close to it, and it's incomplete. Just a little overthrown as he was throwing that pass for Phil Garner. Well, again, Keith is a young quarterback, and that's one I guarantee you he wished that he had back. You have to learn when you have a guy open like that, you have to put a little bit more air underneath this football. And if he puts a little bit more air underneath it, that is a touchdown. Freddy Cortez on to try a field goal. He is three of seven on the year. They had some things blocked that has, hasn't worked out too well. All three of his field goals coming in the win over Miami from 37, 42, and 34 yards. This one from 41 yards away. 
He hit it solidly. He didn't hit it straight enough. That was wide left. And looked like maybe someone got a hand on that one, but still that was wide left. But still they didn't come up with any points. A good drive overall for Kent State. It, at the very least, Hanford, they picked up some first downs. They, they picked up three on that drive. Can't really tell, but looked like Sanders got in there and possibly got a hand on that football. Now the challenge for the Kent State off our defense, Hanford. Get this Bowling Green offense off the field. <laughs> they haven't been able to do it. Peter bounces outside, literally. Still on his feet at the 30. Finally hit and brought down. Zach Williams finishes him off there for Kent State, but a nice run for Willie Jeter on first down. Yeah, that is the first run, and it, it, uh, uh, it, you know, it's it's funny, we were talking and we were watching the play where Bowling Green got called the penalty, and we haven't had a chance to talk a little bit, of, uh, a lot about Dave Fawcett, their first year head coach. He was absolutely livid over there on the sideline. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't want to be anywhere around him when that happened. Dave Fawcett, a guy who has built programs before, and he is trying to do that right now as the ball's loose. Chris Bullock. Dropped that football or had a little trouble getting it from Sheehan anyway. Cabrani Mixon. There's Dave Clawson. He's been a head coach before and, and been a successful head coach. He was at Fordham from 1999 to 2003. Ended up being named the 1AA National Coach of the Year. Moved on to Richmond from 2004 to 2007. Again, the 1AA National Coach of the Year. Last year he was the offensive coordinator at Tennessee. And now in his first year as head coach of Bowling Green, and Sheehan on first and ten. Goes to Freddie Barnes, who has a lot of running room. Freddie, inside the 20. Keeps his balance for a little while and gets inside the ten-yard line. Danny Sadler finally brings him down. But another huge connection from Tyler Sheehan to Freddie Barnes. Well, you're going to see Freddie Barnes. He's just going to line up on the right side. And what a combination of day so far in this first half this has been. You're going to see Sheehan just takes it and a little slant route. And Freddie Barnes is off to the races. And folks, if he does not stumble here, there is a possibility that he scores another touchdown. Freddie Barnes already 11 catches, 171 yards. Wow. And a touchdown in this game. First and goal from the eight. Nice job defensively for Kent State. Chris Bullock dropped down in a hurry. Well, what a change of pace back there in that backfield from Jeter, who's only 5'7", to uh, Bullock, who is 218 pounds. He is a load once he gets going. Freddie has had some big games this year. A school record 17 receptions against Marshall. He needs 17 receptions to pass Robert Reed for the career reception lead at Bowling Green. I thought, well, oh, that's not likely. Well, it's really likely now because he already has 11. Look at the pace they're going right now. Sheehan keeps it himself. He's hit, brought down. Brian Lanehart gets him at the three-yard line. Well, Sheehan is such a big quarterback. Uh, uh, again, Abel, you know, we know he can throw the football, but he is also not afraid to take this thing and pull it down and just run and stick its head up. Watch him just stick his head up in there on one of those backers. I mean, such a physical force, not only just running the football, but he can, well, we know he can zip it, but he can also run the football. He's also lined up now out wide to the right. Tyler out on the side, Freddie Barnes, the former quarterback. Now in the Wildcat formation, he pitches inside, the ball is loose, and it's incomplete. A little shovel pass inside, dropped. It looks like a fumble. Well, people yeah. react like a fumble, but it's an incomplete pass. Well, that's a dangerous play. And then we talk about Sheehan out here lined up to the right, Jeff. You know, he's he's already caught three. I think there's a three touchdown pass. It is. Yeah, he's caught three touchdown passes uh, in his career. So, but that's a dangerous play right there. Matt Norsick on to try a 21 yard field goal. Nick Maya Vanelli is the holder. Bowling Green trying to make it 17 straight points from 21 yards. It's a good one. Matt Norsick puts it through. And after being down 14 to nothing, 
Bowling Green has the lead in this game, 17-14, with 145 to play here in the second quarter. Mac fans get the latest news and notes from around the conference sent directly to you by mobile device or email by following the Mac on Twitter at Mac Sports or becoming a fan on Facebook. Visit mac-sports.com for links and details. 17-14, Bowling Green as Jerry Phillips booms it to Anthony Bowman at the five-yard line. Anthony, nice return, gets out across the 30-yard line. Hit knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Jared Sanderson, well, we've called his name more than a few times today, both defensively and on special teams, on the stop there for Bowling Green. Well, you've heard of wedge busters. Let me tell you something. I know we won't get a chance to see this, but number 47, Dwayne Wood, listen to this. Oh, just goes right through there, and he just tore that wedge apart. That was kicker Jerry Phillips applying the final <laughs> hit there. How about that? Andre Flowers in the game at running back now, and Keith on first down throws incomplete off the hands of Tyshawn Good. Tyshawn, a freshman from Syracuse, New York, and a kid who went to the Hargrave Academy last year. Kent State has done a great job recruiting the Hargrave Academy over the years, and this year's team no different because Will Johnson went to Hargrave. A couple of other players on this team, Josh Pleasant. Well, Spencer and, and, and Spencer Keith in this uh, Flash's offense, they have to be really careful here because they want to try to get something, uh, maybe get, pick up some points, but they do not want to go three and out really, really quick and give that ball back with time on the clock to Bowling Green's offense, especially how they've been clicking lately. Jamison Cons makes that catch for Kent State. Guy who played linebacker here for the Golden Flashes for his first three years. Last year moved to tight end, broke his ankle, ended up redshirting, and this year playing the H-back spot for the uh, good football player at 6'3", 222 pounds, three years at linebacker, and now playing offense. That's Flowers. Plowing ahead on third down and nine. He'll be short of the first down. You're going to see Bowling Green call the timeout You here. bet we are. Chris Jones on the tackle for the Falcons. There's 54 seconds, Hanford, and the way that Freddie Barnes has been able to get open deep. Dave Clawson thinking, let's take a couple of shots at this. Well, yeah, it, it, you know, if you were on the, like I said, if you were on the Kent State side, this is exactly the scenario you didn't want to play out. I mean, you didn't want to just go three and out, no. and now you're going to put that pressure back on a tired, tired, tired Kent State defense. They have to come back on the field, and, you know, they've been playing that bend but don't break defense, but here lately, the last few possessions, it has been breaking. Kent State coming into this game with a record of two and three. They opened up with a win at Coast or against Coastal Carolina here at Dick Stadium. Went to Boston College, tough one, lost 34 to seven. Then lost here against Iowa State, 34 to 14. Beat Miami, 29 to 19. And then last week went to Baylor in Waco, Texas, and lost 31 to 15. Trying to go to two and zero in the MAC. Matt Reinhardt at the 25 yard line. Willie Jeter back at the 15 for Bowling Green. Ryan Hart drops this one at the 30. And Jeter gets away from it. The 23-yard line, the starting spot for Tyler Sheehan. You can be sure that they won't be staying there because Freddie Barnes is going to be running patterns here, Hanford. Boy, he has just been outstanding today. He's just shown that not only can he catch the short ones, but he can go deep. Excellent hand, great route running, and again, not afraid to come across the middle. Freddie Barnes just doing it all for Bowling Green today. Unbelievable first half numbers at 11 receptions, 171 yards, already a career high, Hanford, and we're in the first half, and a touchdown. Jeter wrapped up, brought down. Nice job defensively by Monte Simmons. Monte Simmons, excuse me, for Kent State. Brian Lanehart also there to help out. Well, it just seems like Bowling Green right now is just going to say, hey, we're not going to try. We're not going to do anything crazy. We're just going to take and run this clock out. Are you surprised? No, I am not. You're not surprised. Let's go in and come okay. back out this second half. I'm a little surprised. <laughs> the way Freddie Barnes has been able to do anything he's wanted today, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't have been surprised at all. In fact, I expected them to put it up a little bit. Well, you know what happened? Freddie went over to the coach and he said, I'm a little tired right now. Win it. Let's go in and have time. Let me catch my breath and let's come back out this second half and I'll pick back up from where I started. It sounds like a free history. History. Yeah. It's scary to think he can pick back up from where he left off, isn't oh. it? Well, he's had huge games. I mentioned he 17 catches against Marshall. In the season opener, he had 15 catches, 157 yards, and two touchdowns against Troy. And already today, 171 yards against Kent State. Second down and 12. And off goes to Chris Bullock. A little running room up the middle. Kevin Hogan brings him down, but he gets out to the 31-yard line. Clock running. Under 20 seconds to play here in the first half, and that should be the final play of the first half. It seemed like that was a huge hole. Bullock a little slow uh, hitting that hole. Looked like he was popping a little bit instead of popping through that hole. But, uh, again, only a few seconds left before the half. Interesting first half here at Dick Stadium. Kent State had two big plays. They had the end around that went 86 yards for a touchdown. They returned a block field goal, 82 yards for a touchdown. But Bowling Green came back with a bunch of nice drives. They put up 17 points, and they have a three-point lead at halftime. Kent State with a little work to do, both offensively and defensively. A three-point Bowling Green lead at halftime. It's 17 to 14 here at homecoming at Dick Stadium. Jeff Phelps along with Hanford Dixon and Hanford. Big plays right away in this game. Got Kent State off to a great start. And at that point, you thought the momentum that they build up from these big plays might carry them for a long time. Sam Kirkland on the little reverse goes 86 yards on the first play from scrimmage for Kent State. Well, yeah, they came out and they hit the scoreboard really early. And you're going to see them right here with the block. Uh, field goal attempt right there and then you're gonna see my man Rainey come out of there and he's gonna hump it and take it He's gonna run out of breath a little bit But he's <laughs> gonna make it all the way in the end zone for an early 14 nothing lead So at that point after 14 to nothing Bowling Green really started to put some drives together Hanford That was a nice drive 12 plays 70 yards and then some big plays to Freddie Barnes Well, yeah, he started off going to Hodges Hodges caught the first touchdown and again that combination that target We all know that's been there Barnes and Sheehan and what happened was this guy has just had a phenomenal game the first half and they come back and they tie it up and then they do a field goal to lead this ball game right now. After Jerry Phillips had the field goal blocked Bowling Green went to Matt Norsick he hit a 21 yarder and that made it 17 14 at halftime Kent State only four first downs Hanford three of them coming on one drive so some work to do for Kent State here in the third quarter. 14 points for Kent State in the first quarter, 17 points for Bowling Green in the second quarter. That makes it a three-point lead at halftime. 17-14, Falcons on top of the Golden Flashes. Marathon presents the MAC Football Game of the Week. Bowling Green, Kent State, as the Falcons trying to make it a five-game winning streak here at Dick Stadium. Jerry Phillips kicks off to start the second half. Anthony Bowman for Kent State. Across the 20, Whoa. across the 35. Bowman cuts it back and gets it across the 45-yard line. Nice return by Anthony Bowman, averaging 24.4 yards a return. He broke one this year for 92. A good one that one on that time, Hanford. Well, a young man that's not afraid to, pick, uh, to push it up in there. Look at Anthony Bowman right here. He takes his football, sees a hole on the right side, and he hits it. One guy to beat, and that's not happening, but still... Good field position for Kent State coming out the second half. Spencer Keith in the first half. Looking like a freshman quarterback for the most part. That pass tipped down at the line of scrimmage. Jarrett Sanderson, who was the leading tackler for Bowling Green in the first half with six, into the backfield, knocked that pass up in the air, and dangerous hampered once that ball goes into the air like that. Yeah, and then you shouldn't see Spencer Keith get a lot of balls knocked down because he's a big, tall guy. When I say tall, 6'2". So uh, he can see over those defensive linemen. In the first half, 5 of 10, 35 yards for Spencer Keith. On second down and 10. Hand up. And it's a good one by Jaquise Terry. 
the sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama, with a big run. Keith Morgan brought him down, but Kent State picks up a first down as Terry trying to get his third straight 100-yard game. Well, yeah, Jaquiz, again, uh, an excellent opportunity for him to play, and he's making the most of it, especially on this carry right here. Pick up a big, big game. Terry one more time. Wrapped up, brought down in a hurry by Angelo Magnone. Our marathon first half stats, rushing. Dominated by Kent State because they had 86 yards on one play. But passing, dominated by Bowling Green because they had a lot of plays, Hanford. Really efficient through the air in the first half. Not even close, 252 to 35. Terry with seven carries, 45 yards, adding to that a little bit. On second down and eight, he picks up close to five. Roger Williams on the stop for Bowling Green. Well, Jeff, that one's going to come back, but I, you know, I thought it was interesting. You're talking about uh, Bowling, offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, replay second down. That's on Chris Anzavino, the sophomore center. Well, you're talking about Jaquise, and you said Phoenix City, Alabama. And I, you know, that ball, that, you know, oh, I, was, Alabama. I was getting a little uh, cheers going through me because me being from Mobile, Alabama, I and know how where, close is Phoenix I City? know where, well, it's a little ways, but still I know exactly where it is. And uh, when you said Alabama, I just perked up there a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was the submarine sandwich that you have sitting <laughs> yeah. here that was going Let's to perk see, there up There you later. go. There you go. <laughs> Jaquise, uh, running back in high school, over 1,600 yards in his senior year. And, oh, he took a hit on that one. Well, you, Jared Sanderson lays him out. Well, I guarantee you he's going to come right back and he's going to look at Spencer Keefe and say, man, you can't do that to me. When it's like that, you've got to throw it away because he almost got him. Ooh, look at that big hit right there. Jaquise is a sophomore, was playing some wide receiver, but when you, the thought was always that he would go back to running back. But with Eugene Jarvis, they wanted to get him on the field. Eugene out for the season with a lacerated kidney. And Terry is out there as Keith puts that one on the money. Nicely thrown to Jamison Cons. Well, that was a good throw by him. Unfortunately, he's going to come up short right now of the, uh, f uh, of the first down. So uh, it's going to be fourth down and probably a long one if there's such a thing as a long one. And Kent State planning to go for it. Jamison Cons. Nice game last week against Baylor. Four catches, 53 yards on fourth and one with two tight ends in. Keith keeps it himself, tries to spin for the first down. Jarrett Sanderson right there for Bowling Green. And it looks like the spot's going to give Kent State a first down, Hanford Dixon. Well, yes, I think that last effort by Keith got him the first down because initial they had him stop but he is so big and he's also a physical quarterback you're going to see him he's aware of where he is and he's going to make that final push just to put him over uh, to get the first down Keith's first start this year came against Iowa State he was good 21 of 32 255 yards two touchdowns looks right looks left and gets surrounded by white and orange well, just Good the, work by a number of Bowling Green Falcons on that one. Great pressure. Well, again, the pocket just collapsed on him just then. I mean, what happened was that's when uh, Alvarado and company just coming right in there, never stopping again. A number that we have been calling pretty, pretty regular tonight, the strong safe, the strong side linebacker, Jared Sanders, who's having an outstanding game. Second down, 16. Keith steps up to the rush, has an open receiver. Phil Garner brings it in. Down close, ball is spotted at the six-yard line, and a great job by Phil Garner to hang on as Keith Morgan was right there and applied quite a hit, but Phil Garner bringing that one in down close. Well, yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to see he is under all kind of pressure right there. That is a great throw and an even better catch right there. Watch this catch. Look like one hand coming off the football, but a great, great execution to pick up the first one. First and goal from the six. Terry heading left and brought down. Good job by the Bowling Green defense to string that one out a little bit. Cody Basler, the middle linebacker, leading tackler on this Bowling Green team on the season, brings him down. 
Yeah, you're going to see it just a little draw play right there, coming right up the middle. For a minute there, I thought he grabbed him by the hip here, but he didn't. On second and goal. They try to throw for it, and they get it. Dree Archer, freshman running back, brings it in from freshman quarterback Spencer Keith. Well, you got a feeling that Spencer Keith loved playing with these freshmen. <laughs> he will. They're going to be together a long he time. He is Manford. not afraid to uh, throw to him. You're going to see right here Bowling Green's expecting a run. Keith faked the run, pull it out, and throws it to Archer for the touchdown. Freddy Cortez in for the extra point as Kent State takes the lead on homecoming day. Cortez puts it up, puts it in. Ten minutes, 58 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Kent State has regained the lead. 21-17 as freshman Spencer Keith goes to freshman Bree Archer. Touchdown, Kent State. Dree Archer comes up with a touchdown for Kent State. And the Flashes take the lead at 21-17. Dree Archer with his second receiving touchdown on the season. Freshman from Laurel, Florida does the job for Kent State. And now freshman Freddy Cortez from Fort Meade, Florida boots it away for Kent State. Roger Williams at the 20. A little reverse. No, they fake it. Roger Williams cuts it back, and Kent State really didn't bite. Yep, that was a drive that Kent State really, really needed. Uh, it came at a great time for them. Now let's see if their defense can just muster up something, uh, get some energy back, and uh, go back and start playing that defense that they've uh, they've started. I, I think what they they've had the most success tonight playing what we call that cover two or cover seven again where they have uh, the corners up up top and then they got the safeties playing the hash over top of them to protect them. Tyler Sheehan, good first half of quarterback for Tyler, 20 of 27, 252 yards and two touchdowns. He'll have 50 passes before this one's all over and done with. Freddie Barnes gets his 12th reception on the day. Well, they're coming right back up. A good call on first down right now. Pick up about seven yards. That leave them with second and about three. And that's a down where they can pretty much do anything they want. Run it. They could set them up with the screen. Or if they want, they could try the deep pass. Sheehan has two receivers to the left side. One to the right, and that's Freddie Barnes. I'd like to put Freddie by himself, Andrew. Why, why do you do that? Well, you know, if, if you're a corner, though, you've got to be smart because you see him right now, he can only run an inside pattern right here, you know, or something to the inside. Again, you see him, what he did, he just came straight out, uh, just ran a little hook pattern to the inside because there's not enough room for him to run anything to the outside. And what they have to do is you watch it, watch the quarterback. He's in, a, he's in a shotgun, but it's a quick step right now, just like a three-step drop. Watch it. See him come right here? Boom. Just turn right around. And, and the, But that corner is in man-to-man -man coverage. Norman Wolf, the corner on that play. First down, Bowling Green. They're on their own 46-yard line. Third quarter just underway here, homecoming at Dick Stadium. Tyler Sheehan slips in the backfield, but he was able to get it to Willie Jeter. Willie running out of space and surrounded by dark blue. Cabrani Mixon, one of the flashes in there, along with Josh Pleasant to knock him out of bounds. Well, and what you're going to see, this almost turned out to be a big play. You're going to see him. He just trips right there over his center, but still able to get that ball off to Jeter, and Jeter's going to cut it. Now watch the block. He missed the block, but he came. Tyler came up with a great block, and then Josh Pleasant, number two on defense, came up and just put an awesome hit. Jeter stayed in bounds on that one. Clock running under 9-10 to play here in the third quarter. Sheehan looking down the middle for his big tight end, and he can't hit him. Jimmy Scheidler, the intended receiver. Well, Landhart back there on coverage along with Norman Wolf. 
Well, you, you got to give a lot of credit to Wolf. I mean, Wolf really made that play because he was smart enough to understand and know to make that tough, really, really tough for Tyler Sheehan. He got back and got his depth. That would have to have been a really perfect throw in order to squeeze that football in there. Now they have him in a position, third down and 10, and this would be huge right now if Kent State defense can come up with a play to stop him. Sheehan averaging 291 yards a game through the air. Second in the MAC, ninth in the nation. Trying to top that total right here. And the ball kicked around. Dan Hartman almost intercepted. Intended for Freddie Barnes, incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down Bowling Green. Well, I think what happened then, Sheehan, he, uh, he's a smart quarterback because even if, you know, he just took a shot and he threw that ball up there so his guy, Freddie Barnes, could possibly come up with it. But you see three defenders around him. But here's the thing. Even if Hartman would have come up with that football, it would have been just as good as a punt. So smart, smart decision right there by Sheehan. I have Anelli. Boots it away. Lenaric Moltro calls for a fair catch at the 17-yard line. So with 8.48 to play in the third quarter, Kent State gets the football. Flashes with their best offensive possession of this game on their first possession in the second half. We'll see what they do when we come back. Bowling Green cheerleaders, plenty of spirit despite the score. Their team scoring all of its points in the second quarter of this game, but Kent State coming out on its opening possession here in the third quarter and putting up a touchdown. Now on its second possession, Jamison Cons takes a big hit. Roger Williams applied it for Bowling Green. Excuse me, that was Adrian Spencer nailing Jamison Cons as Spencer Keith threw that pattern out there, Hanford, that can be a nightmare for a receiver. Oh, that is a dangerous, dangerous play. Again, just you, you can just see it. I mean, what happened? Spencer Keats has just got his guy wide open right there, and uh, he is just so vulnerable in that position. Spencer Keith, 3 of 5, 41 yards and a touchdown on that first drive here in the first quarter. That's Dree Archer, the young man who caught the touchdown pass, getting his first carry of this game. Kent State looking good on offense on that first drive in this third quarter, Hanford. Yes, they are. You can see them right here. They're with the big, big run, and there he's not afraid to throw the football, and he's coming right there in the end, the big, big touchdown pass coming up, and then there is my man finally getting the game, talking about Archer catching the touchdown pass. Third down and five for the Golden Flashes. Keith, big rush. Oh, and he's hit and brought down. Angelo Magnon picks him up, sticks him into the turf here at Dick Stadium. Angelo, the junior from Steubenville, the Division Three Defensive Player of the Year in high school for the Big Red. Well, again, Keith, nowhere to go. That's just a coverage sack. I mean, he look at this hit. I mean, it's just a brutal, brutal hit. They're saying, hey, young man, welcome to the Mac. And just he's lucky to hang on to that football. Kevin Alvarado, redshirt sophomore from East Chicago, is down for Bowling Green. That's a big defensive play by his mate on that defensive line, Angelo Magnone. Watch the left side of the screen here, Hampton. Oh, he was just at, probably, hopefully, just the win is knocked out of him. Yeah, he, he's up and he's, he's, he's going to be okay. Yeah, I think that's just what happened. Just a win was knocked out of him. He said, man, that was a, you're not supposed to hit me. You're supposed to, you're supposed to hit the enemy. That looked like a collision with his teammate, Cody Basler. Look, look at him smiling there. <laughs> well, now he has even more respect for his teammate. Huh? <laughs> so Kent State stopped. Quick on their second possession here in the second half, and Matt Reinhardt didn't punt the ball away. He's inside the five-yard line. Billy Jeter back at his own 40 for Bowling Green, and boy, Reinhardt nails another big punt. Hanford He's been showing off today with that leg. Jeter hit, brought back. Flags coming in on this play. A couple of them thrown. They are coming all over the place. Byron Tyson. Involved in the action at the other end there. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 51, 
10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Dave Clawson not happy with the call. And with 7.29 to play here in the third quarter, Tyler Sheehan and the Bowling Green offense will come onto the field and try to do something against Doug Martin's Kent State Golden Flashes. 21-17, Kent State on top of BG. Tyler Sheehan and the Bowling Green offense taking over at the 16-yard line, down by four. All 17 Bowling Green points coming in the second quarter of this game. Peter shifts in the back. Here. Two receivers right here for Tyler Sheehan. Jeter. Gets out across the 20 yard line. It'll be a gain of about five. Mixon Pleasant on the tackle for Kent State, but a flag in the backfield. That one's coming back. That's holding. Jeff, for whatever reason, uh, and, and it started. Uh, holding. Offense. Number 89. Half a distance to the goal. Replay first down. Scott McElwee, our referee today, giving us the call. Jeff, for whatever reason, I, I mean, it, it, it started in the first half. Uh, Bowling Green has just been, they started the first half a slow, slow start. And, they really and, did, and, didn't they? And, yeah. and they're doing the same thing in this uh, second half. I mean, offensive coordinator uh, Warren uh, Ruggiero cannot be happy with this start from his offense. They were very sluggish in the first quarter and then just cranked up in the second quarter. They looked terrific in the second quarter, but you're absolutely right, Hanford. Same thing here as they're looking at first and 17 after the penalty. Sheehan from the goal line throws, and that pass is incomplete. That was was intended for Chris Bullock. Well, that play was dead from the start. I mean, it didn't fool anybody. You're going to see Bullock, first of all, coming through the line of scrimmage. Uh, just didn't fool anyone, and it was uh, it was just a little screen pass. It was going to be a screen pass to him, but Kent State's defense right now has a really starting to lay the hammer down. Bowling Green beating Kent State last year at BG. 45-30 to 30 was the final score in that one. Different story here today. Close game at Dick Stadium. And Sheehan just throws this one away. Kent State, good coverage. Pretty decent pressure as well. Kevin Hogan chasing Sheehan out of the pocket on that one, Hanford. Yeah, well, well they've gone back to the defense where they're keeping everything in front of them. They're not going to uh, uh, put those corners right now on an island. You're going to see it right here. Sheehan is nowhere for him to throw the football, and he's moving to his left trying to buy some time, and finally he decides to do the right thing and just throw it away. It's third down and 17. Two of ten for the Falcons today in third down situations. Four receivers in for Sheehan on this play, and he throws it across the middle to his running back. Chris Bullock will be well short of the first down. Cabrani Mixon on the coverage, the junior from Cincinnati Colerain. Well, and that's a win right now for Kent State's defense. Again, that's that's what they're playing right now. They're going to let you catch that, especially when you got third and forever, yep. and you only pick up a few yards, a well short of the first down. And they are just uh, they're just letting you catch it underneath them, and they're going to come up, and they are going to uh, make the tackle. Nick Iavanelli stands on his five-yard line to punt this one away. And Lenaric Muldrow stands on the 36th receiver for Kent State. Muldrow calls for the fair catch at the 41-yard line. So Kent State takes over 6.03 to play here in the third quarter at Dick Stadium. Kent State trying to even its record at 3-3, three and three, but most importantly, Hanford, try and go to 2-0 and oh in the Mid-American Conference. Central Michigan just beating up Eastern Michigan today, 56-8, to eight, as we see on our Max scoreboard, brought to us by Marathon, proud sponsor of the 2009 Marathon Mac Football Championship, December 4th at Ford Field in Detroit. Northwestern beats Miami Temple, a winner over Ball State, and Buffalo winning big over Gardner-Webb, Ohio-Akron, and a two games coming up later tonight in the match. Well, excellent field position already for Kent State on this drive. They're uh, second down right now and about four, but they're almost, well, they're at midfield right now, and this could be really a dagger uh, in the heart for Bowling Green right now if they let Kent State go down and uh, score. You could see it, just a safe pass for Spencer. 
for Spencer Keith. Just uh, throw him out, a little nice completion. Andre Flowers gets the handoff and gets smothered by a couple of Bowling Green Falcons. James Schneider, the senior linebacker from Topeka, Kansas. One of the Falcons right there on the stop. Yeah, and they lost yardage on that down. I mean, they really did, and they they just have a hard time running the football. When you lose a guy like Eugene Jarvis, even with Terry doing very well the last couple of games, Andrew, that, that hurts an offense. Well, yeah, I mean, he's the heart and soul of this offense, uh, uh, and it's very unfortunate for him to be lost for the season. Third down and four for the freshman from Arkansas, Spencer Keith. Runs a little option, makes the pitch to Archer. And Jamal Brown from Cleveland wraps him up, throws him to the ground. Jamal making his 41st consecutive start. He has started everything except his first two games his freshman year for the Bowling Green Falcons. And he was a terrific running back in high school as well, Hanford. I, I, I thought he was a better running back than a defensive back. And he's a good defensive back. Well, he came up from his free safety position and he made an excellent play, made the tackle. You're going to see Spencer right now on his read. He can either keep the football or he can pitch it. And uh, he could not keep it. He had to pitch it. And you have to give Bowling Green some credit. They defended that really well. Reinhardt averaging 50 and a half yards a punt today. And he booms another one. Hangs it high. Jeter has to call for the fair catch close to the 10-yard line. So Matt Reinhardt certainly doing his job today. Oh, he's been doing an excellent job. He's been pinning. It seems like every time he punched the football, he's been pending Bowling Green deep, deep in their territory. Now look where they got to start from the 12-yard line. So it's not going to be an easy drive for them in order to pick up a score. Reinhardt, the punter is a sophomore from Dover and Hanford he's five foot nine you don't see many punters who are five foot nine but when he was in high school he averaged 49 and a half yards a punt <laughs> 49 and a half yards a punt it's a skill that's and, unbelievable and that's a skill I do not have uh, yes of course he can't cover that that's right first and ten for Tyler Sheehan Barnes is going deep he throws under and it's picked off intercepted by Josh Pleasant he gets to the 15, stays on his feet. Jeter from behind, wraps him up, brings him down. Big play by the Kent State defense. They are in the red zone, up by four. Well, this is just a poorly thrown pass by Sheehan. What he had going here, obviously he had Freddie Barnes on one side going straight to the post pattern, and it just wasn't happening. Now he's going to come back, and he throws behind, way behind, the wide receiver right there, and Pleasant just there to pick this ball off and say, look what I found. Now Christmas came early for Pleasant. <laughs> you know, you don't see Tyler Sheehan throw that more of a pass very often, but that was not a good one, and he knew it. Just the fourth interception of the season thrown by Tyler Sheehan. Terry up the middle, touchdown Kent State. Very rare do you see Kent State right now. They are feeling it. They are trying to put this football team away. Again, Jacquez, number 22, starts to his right and sees the hole open up, and he doesn't waste any time hitting it. Watch him right here. Just to counter right, cuts back, and he is off to the races right there for the touchdown. Jacquez Terry. His second rushing touchdown of the season. And Freddy Cortez to try the extra point. Little movement along the lines, but no flags thrown on that play. Extra point up and good. The big interception leads to the touchdown, Hanford. Well, you're going to see it again. Look at this cut by him. You, you know what that's called? Excellent vision by the young man being able to see that hole and cut back in it for the touchdown. 12 yards on the touchdown run. Jaquise Terry doing the job. Kind of odd, Hanford. Alternate those zeros. It looks like a tic-tac-toe board a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? it does. And Kent State is starting to open this ball game wide open right now. 28 to 17 with the third quarter winding down. Now, I, I guarantee you, you're going to have to see Bowling Green right now. They're going to have to open up this offense and uh, see if they can get some of that magic back that they lost late in the first half. 
opening up the offense will not be a problem for Tyler <laughs> Sheehan. <Yes. laughs> He's, uh, you know, he doesn't even go to the huddle. He just goes right there, have his guys at the line of scrimmage, ready to go. A gunslinger, ready to shoot. Brady Cortez ready to boom this ball away. And Kent State up by 11 with 344 to play. Roger Williams, not a whole lot of running room there. Bowling Green takes over right about the 30 yard line. Well, Kent State has come out and done a nice job both offensively and defensively here Hanford in this third quarter. Well, they really has. I mean, they've, they've taken control of this football game, but they should. I mean, you're, anytime you have a team coming, I don't care who the team is, you're playing in your own backyard, you're at home, you're with your own fans, and uh, you got to protect your turf, and they have not disappointed so far here running late in the third quarter. Do you really feel the home field is that big of an advantage? Can't Absolutely, I do. I, I just think it's huge, and uh, it, it depends on the uh, players to keep it that way. Four receivers on the field. Sheehan picks Freddie Barnes. Good choice. And again, you know, we're talking about Bowling Green. I mean, a football team that has lost four straight now, trying to put that put that losing streak behind them to get back uh, uh, to some winning ways to try to savage the season somewhat. Second down and four after a gain of six on first down by Freddie Barnes. Three receivers to the right side. The handoff goes to Chris Bullock. He cuts it back left. And gets out to about the 45-yard line. Nice pickup by Chris Bullock and a first down for Bowling Green. And I guarantee you, if you're on that sideline, if you're Bowling Green's defense, they, they were looking at that second and about six or four, and they're saying, please pick up the first down because we are a little win. And not only do we want you to score, we want you to pick up this first down. It wasn't hard by Bullock. Just good, hard, tough running right there. Bullock is a freshman. Gained 769 yards, averaged 4.8 yards a carry, but that's his highest rushing total on a season. He gets it again as a sophomore, ran for 281 yards, 384 last year. And coming into this game, averaging just 2.4 yards a carry. And what we're starting to see right now, at least from this possession, a little bit of a power uh, surge coming from uh, Bowling Green. They're saying, okay, we're going to show you now that we can run the football. Oh, they're just trying to set them up for the big play, aren't they? Is Andy? that what it is? They're, oh, <laughs> get ready for it. You know it's coming. It has to be at some point. It's what they do. Jimmy Scheidler, the tight end, makes the catch. Norman Wolf on the coverage there for Kent State. Jimmy Scheidler's dad played tight end at Ball State in the early 70s, 1972 to 75. Well, you know, in that first half again, we talked about it, how we said uh, they were just out of sync, or they seemed like they were out of sync. Just seemed like they're that way right now. Uh, uh, you know, after uh, just... How does that happen? It, you know, it's it, it's it's, it's mind-boggling because uh, we saw the flashes of greatness. Uh, no, nope, no pun intended. Right. They're playing the flash. Right. <laughs> <laughs> On third and six, there's a first down. Justice Jones makes the catch, and he gets the ball down to the 34-yard line. Jabroni Mixon. Well, Danny Sadler on the coverage for Kent State. And what happened just then? They worked as a unit. Watch, you're going to see that offensive line. They're going to give him time to throw the football. And again, he just goes right in there and just uh, Jones just sits down right in the hole. And he's making sure that he catch that football. Bowling Green in the eye. Bowling to the up back. He the deep back. Ball's on the 35-yard line. Under a minute to play here in the third quarter as Bullock goes right up the middle, cuts it left where Brian Lanehart wraps him up for Kent State. He is a low, too, because it seems like he's carrying probably two or three guys with him to pick up that tough, tough three yards. That was not an easy three yards that Bullock just picked up. He's a big kid, 5'11", 220 pounds from Destrehan, Louisiana. Cajun country. There you go. Kids from around the country love coming to play for the Mid-American Conference schools in these offenses because they love to move the football. Freddie Barnes short of the first down on second and seven. Well, that's his 13th catch, if I'm not mistaken, today. Freddie Barnes come up short on this one, but again, 
made it a very manageable third down, third and about two. And they're going to think about this one a little bit. Time runs out in the third quarter. Bowling Green on the move. They are down by 11. Falcons need to do a little catching up. We certainly know Tyler Sheen and the guys are capable of doing that. 28-17, fourth quarter. Coming right up from Dick Stadium. It'll be a good one. Kent State, 15 minutes away from going 2-0 in the MAC for just the third time in the last 32 years. But Bowling Green on the move right now as Freddie Barnes out of the quarterback position. Takes the snap, gets inside the 20-yard line. Dangerous guy, Hanford. 15 catches, 200 yards for Freddie Barnes. And then he slips into the backfield and takes a snap. He could do a little bit of everything for this uh, football team. They line him up pretty much everywhere all over the field. Very, very explosive player. And you could see right now, now that we're in the fourth quarter, a sense of urgency right now for this Bowling Green football team. Tyler Sheen gets back under center. Chris Bullock, the lone running back, a receiver to each side. Bullock. Puts his head down, pulls ahead, Cabrani Mixon. Right there on the tackle for Kent State. Gets a little help from Brian Lanehart. Well, what they're trying to do, and, and, and I think it's great, they're keeping uh, uh, Kent State's defense a little honest right now by being able to uh, showing them, hey, we're going to mix this thing up. We're not just going to come out and throw it every single play. We're going to run and look at, look at it right there. 60, 64 plays. It's only 38 for Kent yes. State on our marathon fast stats. Sheehan looking into the end zone, throws short. Hodge fumbles the football in the end zone. Kent State falls on it. I think he was down. And the flashes, do they have the football? No, he was down. I, I, you know, I, I think he was down. Dan Hartman, the man who recovered that football. Now, is it a fumble or isn't it? I, I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to see this replay right here. And if I'm not mistaken, coming here, his knee is down. Hanford, I agree with you. He's down. Watch Lanehart right yeah, there. And he's still the got away. the football. This play is under review, and I think this one will be overturned, Hanford. It, it, without a doubt. And it's a complete pass. Yeah, I mean, he's, it's going to be first and goal probably yep. at the one. Or it should be. It should be. I mean, he was definitely down when they ripped the football out. Dan Hartman doing a nice job falling on that ball in the end zone. Kent State fans looking at us saying, was he down? Well, well I, unfortunately, we had to and, tell them, and, and, yes. And we hate to tell him he was down uh, on that play. But uh, again, Kent State going after the football, trying to come up with the big play, trying to come up with the, with the turnover because uh, Bowling Green, as we said, there's a sense of, sense of urgency right now on this football team. And they know they have to score. And they have to score right now, give their defense a chance. Let's take a look at it again. There he is coming right there. There is the tackle. You can clearly see that the knee is down. He still have possession of the football when they rip it out. Good aggressive play, though, by Lanehart, without question. Well, talking about Brian Lanehart, talking about a, a leader on this team, second uh, team All-Mac, uh, he's he's just one of their leaders on defense. He's also leading this football team in interceptions right now with four. You know, the funny thing about Brian Lanehart, he received one Division I scholarship offer. Really? Came from Kent State University. He took it, turned into a second-team All-Mac safety last year as a sophomore. Let's listen in. After further review, the runner's knee contacted the ground prior to the ball being fumbled. Bowling Green will take over first and goal at the two-yard line. They got it right. Yes, they did. That's the beauty of the replay, hand. Yeah, they, they got it right. They, they, they got it right. Uh, uh, he, he was down. No matter who you're rooting for in a football game, you like to see it done the right way. Absolutely. And that's the right call. 
especially when these young men, they're out there and they're fighting and, and, and you know, they're just leaving it all right there on the field. Double tight ends coming out onto the field for Bowling Green. It's first down and goal from the three yard line. Tyler Sheehan, big guy, good feet. He can run the football. Well, what you're going to see here is just some power football, strength against strength. You got uh, Bowling Green is, is, is looking uh, Kent State in the face and saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. Now they throw a little wow. wrinkle into the offense. How about that? Right side is wide open here. He throws left. And Freddie Barnes gets it into the end zone touchdown. <laughs> Oh, what a great, that was great play. Huh? Oh, that was an interesting play. I like the call. What they did was they came in there and they made Kent State think that they were going to uh, try to just power this football in the end zone. And at the last minute, they spread it out. And then Barnes with the screen pass, and he just takes it right into the end zone for the touchdown. If I'm not mistaken, how many catches is that for him, Jeff? I think at 16. They're going for two. Sheehan rolling to his right. Barnes is in the corner, but he's run out of space. Sheehan throws to the back of the end zone, incomplete. Kent State, good coverage. Adrian Hodge, the intended receiver, and Hodge is not able to bring that in. Well, that was definitely the right decision because if they'd have got that, you're talking about a one-score game that with the field with, with the field goal, they could tie. They could have tied it up. Now they need a touchdown in order to uh, win this football game. But I, I have no problem with that. Now you're looking again at the touchdown play to Barnes, and he is just a physical guy. It's pretty solid. Six foot, 206 pounds. He's from. Chicago Heights, Illinois, and he has been a player. Well, you know the Bowling Green Falcons. You know who he's going after. Do you know a young man named Robert Red? I do know Robert Red. <laughs> so do you. Yes. <laughs> if he catches one more pass, if Freddie catches one more pass, he passes Robert Red, the former Arena League football star, as the all-time leading receptions man in Bowling Green history. Red has 211 career receptions as does Freddie Barnes. 16 ties it, one more, he has the record. It has just been an absolutely beautiful day for football. The temperature is dropping a little bit right now, but still perfect for football. Freddie Barnes today, unbelievable numbers. 16 catches, 202 yards, and two touchdowns. Jerry Phillips bangs it to the right side, Bowman. For Kent State. Gets it across the 30-yard line. All right at the 30-yard line. And Kent State takes over. Up by five. 13-32 to play. If we ever, if Bowling Green kicks off again, I want to just take a look at number 47, Dwayne Woods. You talk about a young man that's a red buster. He goes down through there and he just, they see, they could, uh, they could never get that out of me on kickoff return. I mean, he, no, just don't worry about his body. He's just going in there and just letting it all go. I like that coming from the young guy. Now Spencer Keith needs to answer Tyler Sheehan. He cranks it up, throws down. He has the receiver, and he's open. Kendrick Presley down the sideline and into the end zone. Oh, no. He is ruled out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Oh, what a play. Caught Bowling Green sleeping. What a play from Spencer Keith to Kendrick Presley. Let's watch this. He's coming right here, fake the run, then just comes right back and just throw the football down the field. And he almost went in for a touchdown, but they call him out. That had to be a blown coverage. It's a nice throw right there by Spencer Keith Hanford. He is too wide open. You got Keith Morgan right there, the strong safety who's chasing him. 58 yards on the play, now running room for Spencer Keith. Cuts it back, gets down to the 21 yard line, or excuse me, knocked out by number 21, Adrian Spencer gets down to the seven yard line. By Adrian Spencer. And this is a run, I think, all the way right here for Spencer Keith, and he just takes this thing and gets all that he can get. 
But again, most important, you got Kent State is threatening again here in the fourth quarter. Second down and five. Hit brought down is Jacquees Terry. Jacquees Terry, the ball carrier. James well, Schneider makes the tackle for Bowling Green. Well, I, I think the later this game Back goes, Jacquees is really getting in the getting in the groove right here as far as running the football. You talked about it, a guy with back-to-back 100-yard -back games, and uh, he is starting to look pretty good at that running back position. Ten carries, 64 yards for Jacquees Terry. He has a touchdown, and it's a third down and one. He's the man in the backfield behind freshman Spencer Keith. The option play. Pitch late. Carry into the end zone. Touchdown, Kent State. And just like that, Spencer Keith in the flashes. Answer Tyler Sheehan and the Falcons. Let me tell you something. The young man, Spencer Keith, you have to give him a lot of credit on that play. He ran that option just then to perfection. You're going to see him here coming down the line. He's going to wait absolutely the last minute right there before he pitches the football to give Jacquees time to catch the football and get into the end zone. Perfect play ran by Spencer Key. Kent State adds another one. 35-23, so just like that, flashes go back up by double digits. 12.08 to play. Trying to end a four-game losing streak to Bowling Green here at Dick Stadium. And looking good right now, thanks to Jacquees Terry and the offense. Doug Martin's Kent State Golden Flashes came into this game scoring an average of just 16.6 points a game. More than doubled that today. 35 for the Golden Flashes as Freddy Cortez kicks it off high. Right side. And Bowling Green will take over at the 33-yard line. Jacquees Terry, a couple of second-half touchdowns in this game. He has done a fabulous job since taking over for Eugene Jarvis. On the day, 12 carries, 71 yards, and the two touchdowns. And he's thinking, you know, we're ready to go to 2-0 in the MAC. Well, you could tell Terry is getting in the flow of the game. I mean, he, as the game goes on, I mean, he is becoming uh, the workhorse right there. He is uh, taking it, and he is feeling it right now. And he just felt that end zone. Why do I have the feeling, Hanford, that there are plenty of points still to be scored in this game? I'm thinking this along those lines also. Tyler Sheehan. Lots of time in the pocket. Finally hit from behind. Great coverage by Kent State. They couldn't get to Tyler Sheehan, but he had nobody to throw to. Quentin Rainey finally came up and hit him from behind. Well, also, I think Monty Simmons was in there, too, coming down there. But he had forever to throw this football. Look at him. Look here. Nothing's there. Look here. Nothing's there. All of a sudden, he's got to get rid of it. And Rainey come at the end and uh, gets a hand on there to uh, break up that throw. Good to see Rainey has recovered from the 80-some yard sprint with the blocked field goal for a touchdown. He's had a big day. He has, hasn't he? Played very well. Second down and 10. Sheehan completes it. Freddie Barnes brings it in, and that makes Freddie Barnes the all-time leading pass catcher in Bowling Green history. He passes up Robert Red. 17 catches for Freddie Mitchell, or Freddie Barnes today, and that ties, that passes him and ties his career high for catches in a game. He's had an outstanding day, uh, but, you know, he would, I, I'm pretty sure he would give all those catches up just for a win. Oh, that was a good cliche. I like that. <laughs> Football is a team sport, my man. You know that. Oh, it has to be. On third down and five. Chris Wright brings it in. Danny Sadler on the coverage, and that's a first down for Sheehan and the Falcons. Well, they are on the move right now, and, and they're running those patterns, and they understand, again, that they have to score. Again, just a, a, a big, big down and in pattern. Uh, Sheehan to Chris Wright to pick up the first down. But, you know, they're a long ways from being out of this football game. Oh, if they can come up with that absolutely. quick strike. Tyler Sheehan looks over the sideline. Aaron Pankras, the backup quarterback. One of the men flashing in signals to him. Completes that pass. 
brought in by Jimmy Scheidler as tight end, the senior from Indianapolis, Norman Wolf on the coverage. Well, what Jimmy did, too, I like this. He showed the excellent hands that he has. I mean, just a good catch. Well, normally, when you got a guy as big as him, he doesn't have those soft hands, but he showed it there. Second down and five. Three receivers to the right side. Freddie Barnes to the left. Freddie cutting across the middle. And incomplete and almost intercepted. Norman Wolf wanted that one. Well, he did, and, and uh, he, he, lucky that pass was not intercepted, but when Sheehan was under tremendous pressure uh, just then from the bowling, from the Kent State rushers. Let's check it out. Look at here. He's got two guys wrapped around him right here when he tried to throw this football, and this could have gone a uh, uh, pass interference mm -hmm. because he had his arm wrapped around him, but look at Sheehan. He, you know what? You have to give him a lot of credit just to be able to get that football away. He's a big, strong guy. Leaves Bowling Green with a third down and five. Sheehan completes it to Freddie Barnes. That's a new personal record for Freddie Barnes. 18 receptions in a game. 18. He was leading the nation in receptions coming in with 53. Do the math, Hanford. He's over 70 receptions on the season. Outstanding. I mean, just outstanding, uh, the combination. And, and these two guys, uh, the feel that they have for each other, just knowing how to just go, know where the first down marker is, and pick up the first down. And it was a crucial one. Barnes to the left, three receivers to the right for Sheehan. He wants to throw deep. He does. And almost brought in by Adrian Hodges. Well, that's a pass Hodges has got to catch. I mean, sure, he took a big hit, but you're going to get hit anyway. You might as well catch the football. Perfect throw by Sheehan. Let's see it. Hodges right now, he knows that he should have caught this ball. You hit him right in the chest. Boom. Should have caught that football. Yeah, but Hanford, even though you know that hit's coming. <laughs> oh, boy. Second down and 10. Little screen pass to Jeter. Nicely set up by Bowling Green. Jeter, good run. Just put his head down and bowls his way down to the 15-yard line. Well, you know you got a chess match going on between the offensive coordinator for Kent State and, the, I mean, the defense coordinator for Kent State and the offensive coordinator for Bowling Green. And here, guess who won this one? Bowling Green. They caught Kent State in, a, in just what they wanted, in a blitz, coming right up the middle, and there they go, hit Jeter with the screen. And we have something going here. Pick up another first down. From the 15-yard line. Sheehan has plenty of time, runs out of time. Kent State gets to him. Cabrani Mixon gets in for his second sack on the second sack of the season. Well, you know, Sheehan's got to be smarter than this. I mean, you can't hold that football that long. And uh, for a veteran like himself, he's got to understand and know that he has to get rid of the football. He can't take a sack in that situation this late in the ball game. Loss of 12, second down, 22. Sheehan, heavy rush again, and he goes down again. Monte Simmons, Aaron Hall, right there for Kent State. Man, where did Aaron Hall come from? And like someone shot him out of a cannon coming in there at Sheehan. Sheehan, now this is not on you. This is on your offensive lineman. Run a little stunt right there. You see Hall coming back to the outside and pick up the sack nowhere for him to go and Sheehan right now is going backwards rather than moving forward. Aaron Hall senior from Gold Vein, Virginia gets the sack. Sheehan heavy rush again. Steps up throws completes it. That's Chris Wright along the sideline and he gets down to the 15 yard line. Danny Sadler on the coverage, but they need a 29 for a first down, Hanford. They're not going to get it. Well, and that rush was all over him again, and this is going to be for an interesting decision right now. They're looking at fourth and about nine, and I don't think there is any doubt whether or not they're going to go for this on fourth down. Crank it up, right? Fourth down. Ten to go for Bowling Green. Well, they trail out. by 12. Just under eight minutes to play, and they want to make sure that everything is all set up on this one as Tyler Sheehan comes to the sideline to talk to his head coach. Big play when we come back. It's Kent State by 12, 7.55 to play in the fourth quarter. Kent. 
Doug Martin now in his sixth year as head coach of the Kent State Golden Flashes. Kent State called that timeout, Hanford. Well, I, I think that was very smart uh, for uh, Kent State uh, because what they wanted to do was, you know, let, let's face it, their defense is sucking a little bit. They're a little tired. And uh, they said, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to give you guys a fresh start. Just give me one play. One play all out. Dig deep and show me something. And now we can stop these guys and take some time off the clock. BG perfect on fourth down today. Two for two. Huge play for the Kent State defense. Fourth and ten. Sheehan. Lots of time. Pass was tipped into the end zone. It's off the back of Josh Pleasant. But a flag in the end zone, and that's going to be pass interference against the Kent State corner. No, the ball was tipped. No? The ball was tipped. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. So, uh, the penalty part... was for pass interference defense. The pass, however, was tipped by the defense. There is no pass interference. First down. Quinton Rainey, the man who tipped that. Pleasant would have been called for the pass interference, as the referee explained, but nice job by the defense. Kent State gets the football, Hanford, with 7.48 to play. And, and if you're going to see, the only reason why, if it wasn't tipped, Pleasant was going to be called for the pass interference was because he had his back. He was pretty much shielding the, uh, the wide receiver, and he had his back and didn't turn around for the football. Spencer Keith, 10 of 18 today, 141 yards, a touchdown. And Reese Terry trying to get his third straight 100-yard game. And you know Kent State will want to run the football right now and work some of that clock. Big plays today, something that Bowling Green thought they had to stop Hanford, and they didn't do it. Sam Kirkland had the 86-yard touchdown run on the first play from scrimmage for Kent State. Quinton Rainey. After a blocked field goal, returned at 81 yards. Josh Pleasant had an interception. Hendricks Presley had that big 58-yard reception. It led to the last touchdown for Kent State. Second down, six. Two receivers to the right side from the freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas. Terry hits it out across the 20-yard line. Jarrett Sanderson there. Making the stop for Bowling Green, gain of one, maybe two, and it brings up third down and about six. Well, Terry is definitely getting his opportunities right now in order to run this football because uh, Kent State, again, is trying to take off as much time as they can off this clock and not give uh, Sheehan and company uh, it, many opportunities to uh, win this football game. Uh, it's going to be interesting now to see. I, I still think, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. It's going to... Uh, it got me confused up here now. <laughs> it's third down and four. They'll probably run it. For Kent State, three receivers right spread out on the offensive line. That leads to some pretty nice running lanes, and that's exactly <laughs> what Spencer Keith takes advantage of. They, they ran it, but it was a safe run because you have to understand, you still got the young man back at quarterback talking about Spencer Keith who is a freshman. He's going to come here, and he's going to look fake like he's running the football, but look at that hole. Again, that hole is big enough that I can get through it right now. And it, Really? Yes. May pull something, though, wow, going through yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> You'd need help getting off the field. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> a little hamstring. <laughs> Hanford's standard line when somebody says, you look good, he always says, what? Ten plays. Just give me ten plays. I could still play ten. <laughs> from the 32-yard line on first and 10. Kent State trying to work that clock as Terry brought down by Brandon Jackson. Five minutes, 37 seconds to play here at Dick Stadium. Kent State has lost four straight to Bowling Green on this field. They've lost seven of eight to the Falcons overall, but now up by 12 as they are running the football very, very well today. Yeah, you got, um, you know, Bowling Green needs to do something. I mean, they need to come up with a stop right here uh, because they cannot afford to let Kent State pick up another first down. This is crucial, crucial that they stop them on this on this series. Second down and eight. Jamal Brown, the corner, came up showing blitz on that and absolutely nowhere to run. Jamal gets in and makes the stop. Well, he's a guy that's been around a, lot, a, a, a while now. Hasn't he, though? Bowling Green calls timeout with just under five minutes to play. There are guys around the conference, Hanford, who it seems as if they've been 
at school playing football for seven or eight years, and Jamal Brown is one of them. Well, he is. This is his 41st consecutive start uh, with this team. I mean, he's, 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 just, uh, he's just been a cornerstone right there at that free safety uh, position, and he came up with the big play there. They needed it, too. Now you're looking at third and about eight. And uh, what they, I, I think what they did with that third and about eight, they kind of uh, take Kent State out of that quarterback draw situation. Now they're going to force them, really, if they're serious about picking up a first down, they're probably going to have to throw it. Our play of the game is brought to you by First Energy, our energy working for you. First offensive play from scrimmage. Terry went left, gave it to Sam Kirkland going right. Gets a block downfield, and goodbye, Sam. 86 yards on the touchdown run. Made it seven to nothing. Kent State on top. Another big play on the block field goal. Bowling Green coming back and scoring, taking the lead at halftime. But that play kind of set the tone that we were in for a lot of fun today here at Dick Stadium. That's Luis Terry. Not a whole lot of running room on third down and eight. Darius Smith, James Snyder on the stop for Bowling Green. And it brings up fourth down for Kent State, 4.51 on the clock and Bowling Green takes another timeout. Well, if, again, if Bowling Green was going to have any chance, they had to uh, hold them and they did. Now they can hopefully they can uh, get something uh, on this punt return, but that has not been happening today. We have really seen some bombs come in as far as the punts are concerned. Matt Reinhardt averaging 48.2 yards a punt today. How about that? A young man, and he's got a long of 64 yards. And he's had the hang time today, too, Hanford. These haven't been punts that dropped and took great bounces. He has put them up in the air, and these punts have been flying. And there's not a whole lot of wind here today, so it's not like Matt has been taking advantage uh, of a big, strong wind. I he thought, has just been kicking it. Jeff, I thought possibly we may see Freddie Barnes back there because we know that he, they have used him to... Uh, uh, do some punt return. Mm -hmm. Bad snap handled by Reinhardt, and that is Freddie Barnes. He was the up man on the return, and he gets it across midfield, so a poor time for a bad snap. Reinhardt gets off a short punt, and Bowling Green with terrific field position, 442 to play. Jeff, they are lucky that they got that punt they off. Sure are. I mean, that could have been devastating. Let's take a look at this. Look at this. The snap is low, and right barely got this off oh if they would have blocked that they would have been right in this thing <laughs> that was close now Sheehan from the 45 yard line he has plenty of time 442 one timeout remaining and he goes to Freddie Barnes up the middle and He's Freddie's still on his feet Freddie Barnes could take this one into the end zone he and he did. does Oh my goodness, this young man is having a phenomenal day. Freddie Barnes and Sheehan didn't waste any time with the hooking up, coming up with a touchdown that they needed, and they needed it right away. Let's take a look at this. Just a slant pattern, and he is going to break some tackles. Look at one, two. Here is the third tackle. Possibly one more, which is four to get in the end zone. Freddie Barnes broke four tackles on that play. 45 yards on the touchdown for Freddie Barnes. Extra point is up, and it is good. Bowling Green gets exactly what it needs. Freddie Barnes, 19 catches, 260 yards, and three touchdowns today. Hang on, everybody. An exciting 429 coming up from Dick Stadium. Today's game has been brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. First Energy, our energy is working for you. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. And by National City, now a part of PNC, proud to be the official bank of the Mid-American Conference. Ever since I said Freddie Barnes has 19 catches for 260 yards and three touchdowns, my three-time Pro Bowl cornerback <laughs> partner has been twitching uncontrollably. 
Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just I just uh, sent a message to Ozzy Newsom, who's president and general manager of the Baltimore Ravens, telling me I just said Freddie Barnes. I said, <laughs> man, this kid is phenomenal today. <laughs> a little scouting on the side. Yeah. Nicely done. <laughs> the ball's placed at the 40-yard line. First out. Well, Freddie will be on the Ravens watch list. <laughs> yes. You can be sure about that. <laughs> yes, he will. Oh, it's just, boy, they needed a quick strike, too, and they came up with boy, one. Could that have gone better? They used their timeouts to kill the clock, left themselves with plenty of time. They used two timeouts, then the bad punt, Hanford, and then the big play. Now Kent State needs to do something offensively here. Well, what they did was they put the pressure on their defense. They're saying, hey, get it back to us. Give us the ball again, and we will show you what we'll do with it. Kent State tried to kill that clock on their last possession, Hanford. They, they really kept to the running game, trying to milk the clock. Good idea, except the punt didn't go well, and then a big play, and now you're just up by five, and still plenty of time in this football game with four minutes approaching. Well, on that possession, they went away from what they've done, what's got them the lead. They're, they're not being aggressive anymore, and they can't afford to do that. They can't sit back on this Bowling Green offense. Second down and seven after Terry picked up three on first down. Keith quickly throws, tipped, and almost. Almost an opportunity there for an interception. Keith Morgan was on the coverage there, and Tyshawn Good could not hang on to it. Well, that could have been a disaster. You said Keith Morgan, look at, let's take a look at this. Just a quick slant pattern, and he threw it a little bit behind him. Oh, and if Keith Morrison would have, Morgan would have been to the outside a little bit, he would have still been running down the sideline. Third down and seven. Spencer Keith and the Golden Flashes really need a first down here. Swings it out to Terry, incomplete. And an awful three downs for Kent State. Just terrible, 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 terrible possession right there for Kent State. Bits late in the ball game with 3.44 to go to turn the ball back over and give it to Bowling Green, give them an opportunity to score a touchdown and win this ball game. Now they put the pressure on their defense. Doug Martin, a terrific quarterback coach he had David Garrard at East Carolina and Josh Cribbs here at Kent State Julian Edelman now has another good young passer in Spencer Keith but that last possession did not go well and Matt Reinhardt back to boom this one away and they need the big kick this time a little wobbly Jeter fumbles the football right to Freddie Barnes. <laughs> oh my. When things are going well, things are going well. Man, this Freddie Barnes, I mean, he is all over the place. Look at this. The ball hit Jeter right in the helmet, in the face mask, and he took his eyes off it. And thank goodness for uh, Bowling Green, Freddie Barnes was right there to pick the football up, and he filled it clean. What a break for Bowling Green. Hanford, how do you let a ball hit you in the face mask? Oh, that's, uh, that's unbelievable. Uh, that is, uh, you just take your eyes off it. 334. Tyler Sheehan and the Falcons taking over at the 26-yard line. They have been able to move the ball today when they've needed to, but that time Kent State gets to him. Big Aaron Hall, the senior, six foot, 291 pounds of fun. Gets the Tyler Sheehan. I think Tyler would disagree with my little opinion there. Well, that was a huge, huge sack. And again, you see where he wanted to go. He wanted to go back again to a Freddie Barnes, who I thought was being held out there. But still, big, big sack for Hall. Second and 14. Guess who? The man, Freddie Barnes. That makes it 20 Freddie catches Barnes. for Freddie Barnes today. That's a new personal record. He has surpassed Robert Red as the all-time leading receiver in Bowling Green history. He has three touchdowns. He's approaching 270 yards on the day. On third and eight. Sheehan's throw a little bit low. Is it a catch? I think it is. Yes, it is. I think it is. He, Kent State says no, but Justice Jones says yes. I caught that one. Yes. Justice, the sophomore from Chino Hills, California. Well, this is a first down. You're going to see him right here. I that, can't that see it. It looks look, pretty good. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, tough angle on that one. That was a us. very, very tough angle. And uh, you thought. Yeah, they're going to review this one. But uh, if you were Bowling Green, you were supposed to really, as soon as he put that ball down, snap it. Let's take a look at it. 
he caught it. It is a catch. Yep. Or if he didn't, we can't tell from that camera angle. Man, you have to give our guys that with this cameras a lot of credit. That is excellent yep. shot. That, look, that looks like a good one. I think it's a catch. Dave Clawson's team trying to end a four-game losing streak. Bowling Green has had some tough luck. They've played some good teams very well. We mentioned it earlier, just a seven-point loss at Missouri, a seven-point loss at Marshall, and then home against Ohio, a seven-point loss. It's not what you're looking for. Man, it's a, this game has been everything and then some. Hey, did you just see the name Pagel <laughs> on, on the back of that uniform? Yeah. <laughs> that young man is Kellen Pagel. He is the quarterback from Strongsville High School and the son of Hanford's former Cleveland Browns teammate, Mike Pagel. And I, I think that's a catch, Hanford. That is a catch. That is a catch. I, I think so, too. It's gonna be, Even if it isn't, it's going to be really hard to... Uh, uh, overrule you, this. You one. can't overrule it by and, that camera angle, anyway. And it looks like it looks like a good one. Yeah, it looks like he's got uh, he's got his hand underneath that one. Freddie Barnes, young receivers. You want to see how it's done? Watch this. Hope you set your DVRs for this one, kids, because. Here's how you play wide receiver in Division I college football. Well, he put on a clinic today. There's no doubt about it. He was catching it everywhere. Not just catching the football, just great route running. This young man, his awareness on the field, and most important, the run after the catch. Rule the catch. First and 10, Bowling Green, under 2.30 to play. Sheehan. Dumps it across the middle. Wow. Bullock comes off. Wow. This Bullock hangs on to the football. What a big hit right there, delivered right across the middle. Oh, my. <laughs> Cabrani Mixon. The Flash is hard hitting linebacker, delivers that one. It's second down and four, and Bowling Green keeps connecting. No Justice Jones brought down by Danny Sadler, but BG moving the football. They still have a timeout. 159 on the clock. Well, they still got a lot of time left, and now they're, uh, uh, you know, they're cross midfield, and they are moving. Kent State need to make a play on the 43-yard line. Sheehan, two receivers to each side. Throws completes. Justice Jones tries to get out of bounds. Did he do it? He did not. Clock ticking, 143 to play here at Dick Stadium. Boy, this is exciting, isn't it? You got uh, This is a great game. Yes, it is. Kent State fans are on their heels here. Second down and one. Under a minute and a half to play as Sheehan rolls to his right and throws complete to Freddie Barnes. How do you let Freddie Barnes be that wide open out there, Hanford? Well, you know, they're giving him a lot of cushion right now. They're giving him a lot of cushion. Yes, and, but. And, and he's smart enough to know to go right there and sit it down to, to just take whatever they're giving him and get out of bounds. They've moved it to the 26-yard line. Tyler Sheehan has orchestrated some great comebacks as quarterback for Bowling Green trying to do the same thing again. Across the middle, complete. And Hanford, I, I'm sorry, these five, six, seven yard, 10 yard passes add up. Well, they do right now. And the problem is right now for Kent State, they're in a position where they could take a shot now in the end zone. Absolutely. Bowling Green still has one timeout. Sheehan. Rose to the sideline, incomplete. Pass intended for Adrian Hodges. Stops the clock with 57 seconds left to play. Well, you got Sheehan right now. Look at this 42 wow. attempt. Wait, well, 59 attempt, 484 yards. That's got to be a yes, it is a career high for him. 278 yards going to Freddie Barnes. What a combination. They're looking at a third down and three. 57 seconds to play here at Dick Stadium. BG down by five. Sheehan across. Oh! Chris Wright cannot hang on. Josh Pleasant 
there on the coverage for Kent State. He had him. He had, they, they had the coverage that they wanted, and Chris Wright, look at him. The young man is mad at himself. He put it right where he's supposed to, oh, right boy. in his hands, and the problem is he tried to catch it with his chest and not his hands and tried to run without the football. And for that was probably more than a first down. Yeah, that was a touchdown. So here we go, fourth down and three. 52 seconds left, three receivers left, one to the right for Tyler Sheehan. He throws, completes it. Hodges gets the first down, knocked out of bounds, clock stops, 45 seconds to play. Man, and everybody here at this stadium was oh, up on boy. their feet on the fourth down play, and Sheehan delivers another strike to Hodges. Let's take a look at it right here. A safe pass, no one around them, and Hodges get everything that he can get and get out of bounds to stop this clock. Just a crossing pattern right there by Hodges. First and goal from the seven. Falcons still have a timeout. Sheehan chased out of the pocket. Hit brought down. Sheehan has to understand that you throw this football away and you stop the clock and you live for another day. You had the ball on about the four-yard line, I think it was, and you can't take a sack in that situation. Kevin Hogan, Monte Simmons right there for Kent State. 18 seconds to play. Sheehan across the middle. Incomplete. Pass a little high, intended for Justice Jones. 11 seconds to play, third down. Well, I could tell you one guy who's not going to catch this, and you're talking about Freddie Barnes, because I think I saw one, two, three guys on him, and they are doubling up Freddie Barnes, and you can see they had, they were doubling up right there Jones, too, but the ball was a little high. Bowling Green still has a timeout. 35-30, Kent State by five, third down and nine. Sheehan, three receivers to the right side as he looks to the bench for a signal. Freddie Barnes by himself on the left. Sheehan, they have the timeout, gets hit, Touchdown. and gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Tyler Sheehan from nine yards out, and Bowling Green takes a one-point lead with five seconds on the clock and look at this bowling green bench they are just beside themselves and they should be look at the coaches giving the chest bump with the players what a drive that timeout hanford still having that timeout allowed bowling green to try something like that and they call the draw play for sheehan look at him he's going to take this right here it is a run all the way he just picks his hole and right there he's hit and he he's big enough where he just turns his back and keep his feet moving to get into the end zone what a game we have had here at dick stadium wow this was a 28-17 Kent State lead going into the fourth quarter. And then Dave Clawson's team picked things up. Freddie Barnes with a two-yard touchdown reception, 28-23. Kent State came right back, went up by 12. Jaquise Terry with a three-yard touchdown run. It made it 35-23 with 12.08 to play. And then Freddie Barnes with a 45-yard touchdown catch on the first play after a bad punt. That made it 35 to 30 with 4.29 to play. And Bowling Green gets the football back after a bad offensive possession by Kent State and takes it right down the field very quickly and very efficiently. Well, and Dave Clausen, I mean, in his first year right here at Bowling Green, uh, you know, his team has only won one football game so far, but they played well. And uh, you have to give them a lot of credit today. They never gave up. They just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And finally, they have the lead in this ball game. Dave Lawson upset. Ball goes against Bowling Green. They have a one-point lead, five seconds left. They call the delay on Tyler Sheehan. 
quarterback gets blamed for everything. Doesn't <laughs> They have all the glory. Those guys, they're yeah, glory yeah, guys. That's all I hear. They don't bother. Well, that's the flag. Well, you got a penalty coming yeah. up uh, right here. That penalty is declined. The try is no good. Legal formation. Well, you had Does it matter? Well, you had Hodges, what's supposed to be on the field, and all of a sudden at the end, you see him coming off the sideline, just sprinting, trying to get in a position. Our Cooper Tires defensive play of the game brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. Kent State had it. They blocked the field goal. Will Johnson ladder rolls it. Quinton Rainey takes off. Picked up some blocking. 82 yards for the touchdown. That made it 14 to nothing, Kent State. Oh, man, it's just been an exciting day. And I agree with that being the defensive player of the game. Look at Rainey. He's coming over there now after he catches his breath. He won a little high five. My man, you deserve it. Wait, this is going to be fun. Now Bowling Green's offense back out on the field for this two-pointer, and they are just going to take the knee. And there's five seconds, because that can be returned for points if something went drastically wrong. Five seconds on the clock, and Bowling Green will have to kick off to Kent State. Boy, if this score holds up 36-35, it, it would be a devastating loss for Kent State. Kent State had a 14-point lead in the first quarter of this game. After being down by three at halftime, they came back to go up by 11 in the third quarter and up by 12 in the fourth quarter with 12.08 to play. But Dave Clawson is five seconds away from getting his first Mid-American Conference win as head coach of the Bowling Green State University Falcons. And Kent State has to be a little stunned. Freshman Spencer Keith has done a very nice job for Kent State today, Hanford, but a couple of times when the offense really had to do something. For instance, those last two drives in the fourth quarter when they needed to maybe pick up some more yardage, certainly on the last one, kill the clock, get some things going, and it didn't happen. Spencer Keith today, 10 of 20, 141 yards and a touchdown, but that last possession by Kent State, absolutely critical, and it did not go well. And, you know, we talked about uh, Bowling Green offense being out of sync. And, and, and I agree with you, partner, on those two drives. I mean, this Kent State offense just went into a, a, I don't know what mode it was. Jamison Cons falls on that football on the 30-yard line. Three seconds on the clock. So Kent State has three seconds to try and pull off a miracle. And you got Bowling Green right now is looking for their fourth straight win over Kent State. They're getting ready to win their fifth straight here at Dick Stadium unless drastic things happen. Coming into the game, Giorgio Morgan at quarterback for Kent State. Giorgio rolls to his right. He has three receivers <laughs> on that side. He puts a lot of air under it. <laughs> and it... Drops to the turf. Game is over. 36-35. Bowling Green comes back behind Tyler Sheehan and Freddie Barnes to give Dave Clawson his first Mid-American Conference victory and a very tough defeat for Doug Martin and the Kent State Golden Flashes. This is a tough one for Kent State to uh, swallow. I guarantee you, when they go back and they look at the film and they watch what happened during the course of this ball game, they're going to say that they left a lot of football out there on the field. Today's MAC football game has been produced by the Kent State Sports Network. Executive producer Jeff Bentley, producer Russ Jenish, Tyler Sheehan, 44 of 63 today, 505 yards, four touchdowns. Freddie Barnes, 22 receptions, 278 yards, and three touchdowns. Bowling Green continues to dominate Kent State. That is eight of nine that they have taken from the Kent State Golden Flashes, including five straight right here at Dick Stadium. For Hanford Dixon, I'm Jeff Phelps. Thanks for being with us. It's BG.